with whatever is done and said today, I hope it will be to the honor and glory of your name. For every person who sits here has the best interest of this country at heart, and we all know that. But let us conduct ourselves in a way that persons looking on will see the merit of our work. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I had actually indicated it was a Portmore prayer, but, you know, a Portmore prayer this morning. But, but we were very welcoming of your... <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Member Dan. No, no, absolutely. Uh, apologies for absence? No apologies? All right. Uh, members, today we are going to continue with the tourism, Ministry of Tourism. The, the, the brief on the Berlin Lodge master plan has come in, but I, I've just seen it, and I think, Members, maybe we need to just leave it and we can look at it at a, a future date. Um, members, it is we are we hopefully will finish tourism today, but if not, we have to determine whether we're going to have one more sitting or not. We're at the end of um, of November. The one, if we were the only one that I think that we could do, and not and not do it as a full sum, but we could ask the Port Authority to come, maybe with UDC, just to to deal with the port at Port Royal project alone. But as I said, whenever you're doing these things, giving them appropriate notice is good, and I don't know whether in a week or two we may be able to do that. So let's see how it goes with the tourism. And what I would ask members is we can make contact with them. And if we are able to have a sitting, I will round robin the members. If you feel that we can or should, we will go ahead with it. If not, we put it after the first sitting next year, if members agree. Yeah? All right. So with that. So, members, I, I understand that we want to try and finish a meeting in an hour and 15 minutes. So, I'm going to be rather stern with yes. time. Yes. And I will be very obedient to your directives, as usual, Chairman. But, but, that, but, that sentence is good until the last. <laughs> but go ahead. Thank you very much, Chairman. <laughs> um, I was struck. Yes, the other matter came up here before regarding um, regarding employment separation in a number of entities, particularly as it relates to Petrojam. And I saw in the in the newspaper this morning the case of um, e-learning where there was a $12.5 million separation package for improper um, separation. I raise it here, Chairman, because I recall very clearly the matter of Petra German, the CFO, one Mr. Brown, who was fired and then he was brought back and put on guard leave. And I understand it's 13 months he was on garden leave. We were lamenting what was being grown in the garden that he was on leave for. And the information I got is paid or was paid a million dollars a month, which is $13 million. And he's back on the job now after 13 months. And two persons would have been engaged in acting capacities while the $13 million cost was incurred, so we paid for two acting. So this, yes, in other words, the, the person who replaced him. What, what was the post? Um, yeah, CFO. No, one second. CFO. So right. I just raise it to say if, if by Let chance me. we could get an update. Chairman, cha cha chairman, I, I, we are descending. We are descending. Early. Uh, um, very, very early. Firstly, we haven't made any attempt to to address the issues which are set out Clearly. on the order paper. Yes, no, no, no. We are and so so we have no, gone please. into no, no, peripheral no. matters which relate not to anything for which we are here this morning. And we seem to, given 
what we have said, members have said that they have to leave here and all kinds of things. Let us confine ourselves I, to the I, matters at hand. I no? think, one, one second, what, what I would suggest, I think what the member is really requesting is a brief on the matter. And I think that's, a, that's, all, that's where we can leave it. No. No. Yes. Right. Yes. I mean. As I said. In I my own defense, Chairman, it is customary at the beginning of the meetings, to at the beginning, we deal with outstand, any outstanding committee matter. So I thought it appropriate to raise it at the beginning. No, no, member, member Campbell, the, the, the member Jackson is correct there. And we had just finished discussing about what we would do moving forward. I think maybe an oversight, he didn't bring it up at that point in time. But I think the, the request he's made is, is certainly in keeping and, and it's noted, member Jackson. I think we can proceed. All right, with that. Yes, morning. Uh, the, well, just to say to you that the, the members, for a number of reasons, are really trying their best to get out of here by 12 o'clock today. So um, I've, they've given me certain commitments to move with alacrity. So we had gone through a lot of the stuff. The last meeting, we had indicated we were at this meeting, we were going to look at. I think we're going to start with TPDCO and TF. If, if remember, so we had done JTB, which is on this list. Had, um, and we had had some discussions on, on Jamaica vacations already. And we had said if there was anything that you felt that you would be able to, to bring it in. So we are just dealing with the two today. Chairman, we're told. Montego Bay. We were told yes. TPD Cotep and Mobe Montego Bay Convention Center. Convention yeah, Center. All right, all right. So with that, uh, Pierce, I would let you, if you'd like to introduce uh, members of a team, and then what we would do is turn over, I think maybe the ED of TPD Co could just give us an overview. Um, we'll have that discussion and then turn over to the the ED of TEF, and we can proceed from there. Over to you, Piers. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, committee members. Um, we thank you for the opportunity to continue providing you with update on the activities of the ministry and the agencies on our purview. As I said, Chairman, today we have with us TPDCO, TEF, and the Montego Bay Convention Center. And so let me introduce the team. From the ministry, we have Ms. Carvel Vaz, our Director of, Director of Corporate Services, and Ms. Maud Chambers, our Manager for Finance and Accounts. From TPDCO, we have Dr. Andrew Spencer, Executive Director, and Mr. Ovel Brown, Acting maybe, maybe Financial as Controller. Maybe as you're going along, maybe the members for the hands up can just indicate who they are as you're, you're doing through the names. Yes. Because as you make a presentation, they they'll they know who okay all right so behind me is miss maud chambers our director of finance and accounts miss carvel vaz the director of corporate services is to the back and beside me is dr andrew spencer executive director for tpd co and mr ovel brown acting financial controller is right behind him um, next to Dr. Spencer is Dr. Kerry Wallace, Executive Director for the Tourism Enhancement Fund. And, um, and um, behind him is Mrs. Francine James Prince. James Prince, and she's the Director of Finance. And behind Francine is Mr. Johan Rampier, he's the Director of Projects. Next to Dr. Wallace is Mr. Karen Benjamin, and is the interim general manager for the Montego Bay Convention Center. And behind Caron is um, Mrs. Patrice Jones, 
and um, Mrs. Jones is the Director of Finance at the MBCC. And I think we are for Minister of Finance. Um, last week, Chairman, she, I, yes, and I'm sure you know her already, sir. <laughs> last week, Chairman, you asked for some information. You requested visitor arrivals for a 10-year period, and we have, in fact, submitted the figures for 2008 to 2018. And um, you asked for the TEF. You, you had submitted those. It, they, they came in. They, it was sent. It was sent. I think this morning. So I'm not sure whether they're able to make right. copies. No, we've, we've had some difficulties not getting the information. Um, some of the stuff that had been requested, but the secretary to the right. committee has not been well. Um, oh, okay. So it, it, it might be administrative thing. Okay. But that, what you can do. Is if it is there, it will come later. Okay. Yeah, or I can I can give you the page. I can give you sure. a set. And um, and then we, we also were asked for um, the TEFs finance finance um, well the revenue collected over five year period, and we have that information as well here. So um, I can maybe right. just Great. give you the two pages. Could you just pass it to the chairman for me, please? And as I said, the information was sent. Um, Chairman, you also asked about the results of the tourism, travel and tourism competitiveness report that is published biannually by the um, World Economic Forum. And I told at the time that our economist was actually reviewing the data and doing analysis as we spoke. And um, we do have some information that we can also share with you. The what? We, also, we have some information on the results of the travel and tourism competitiveness report done by the World Economic Forum. So we can share it with you if you also would like to have that. Sure. You're, asking yeah. about the, you're asking about the, um, the, the, the variables that were measured, for example. And I was saying to you then that the variables that were tourism related, we did very well in. The variables that were not direct tourism that those are the areas where the, where the country fell down. Not tourism right. per se, but no, the country the, fell down yeah, more. But, 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 no, mm -hmm. I don't think that was our mm. concern, yes. Oh, okay. The All concern right. I was making is that in the past we have had mm -hmm. similar issues, and what we have done is set up a committee that goes directly into those right. other ministries and agencies right. that where we have fallen short and where we figured that mm -hmm. by virtue of our ability to fund certain projects, we could influence it to yeah. to move the barometer in our favor. And I was yeah. just asking if that had been done. And yeah. in effect, if we were targeting those parameters that were bringing us down. Yes. And I would say that most of them were much wider than we were. For example, ITC readiness of the country. It's things like that. So it's it, there were um, very general things. Price competitiveness and, you know, ground transportation and ports and, you know, Variables such as those. Anyway, um, just to say that uh, we have done, the, done some analysis and, and just to say that, in fact, we excelled in the areas that and, were central and there was to tourism. And one other area you were to, the, the, you yeah. said, the, 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 the linkages in the travel and tourism. Right. No, TT, right. That there was something in there that the retention. Your yeah, request was about, was about, the ret about retention. But that's a separate, that's a separate question, and um, and um, we promised to try to get the data, that data for you. We, I think, we haven't got that data yet. We don't have the data this morning, but we're we're looking at some figures, but we want to ensure the accuracy. So we're just double checking those figures. Okay. All right. All right. So that's information. Yes, sir. All right. Well, if there's anything else, I think we can ask about a breakdown of the resort maintenance on the, seat, the streetscape um, numbers that came in the report, yeah. a breakdown of, yeah. of that. Remember, that will come in the presentations made okay. by TEF and TPD. Okay. All, right. All right. All right. So, Chairman, if you request that TPD could now provide their overview, they can, yeah. they can do so. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Chairman and members. Um, 
the tourism product development company continues to establish itself as a destination assurance agency which really speaks to three S's as we see it, which is safety, security, and seamlessness. It is the, the stamp of integrity on whatever the JTB sells. And so in trying to, to execute that mandate, there are a number of things that we engage in, a number of programs. Um, if you look at the list of programs submitted, I know one of the areas, for example, resort maintenance, um, is actually on the budget of the Tourism Enhancement Fund. The TPD Com manages that process with the third party agency. Uh, however, if you look at this, the spread of the types of things we do, uh, we're very proud of our Spruce Up Jamaica program. I think for the first time in the history of that program, if you go as far back as when it was called uh, TIP, that we have actually managed to get as many submissions as we have that fit the bill of what would be considered a community tourism project. So, so this year for the first time we have uh, 46 projects in, which means we're in excess of 70% at this point in the year of projects that fit the bill and that are with our projects department for execution. Uh, what, what happened was that we changed the approach. Initially what we would do is send out a letter to members of parliament saying submit a project to us and we'll tell you if it fits and there was a, usually a back and forth about what met the criteria. Last year we tried an approach of suggesting projects. So we give you a turnkey project. If, if you're interested in it, then we'll help you execute. If not, then you submit an alternative. This year we took it a step further. We took an approach that looked at what types of things could be done, some tangible with the opportunity to cut a ribbon at a location, but some of the less tangible things, for example, some members of parliament saw it fit to help entities to become licensed, which is a part of our destination assurance trust. So if, for example, entities didn't have their PSRA, which is security training, you could divert a portion of your funds to things like that. So we've seen the implementation rate of that go up significantly. On a broader level, our overall implementation for our projects this year is what we would call a 90% implementation efficiency. What that means is at this point in the year we would have expected to hit 50% with implementation, we're at 45%, so we're falling uh, marginally short. If you look at the projects that are here, there we have a resort upgrading program, we have uh, some other initiatives like attraction and directional signage, which we think are part of the destination assurance experience. The ability to find the locations and to be able to identify an attraction is something that is key in the process. Uh, we've, we've, we've spread that. If you think about community tourism, community tourism cannot be divorced from community development. And there are other elements of that to do with music and to do with sports and vending complexes and the like. So for example, we are working with the Negril Mini Stadium, but we're also doing something in Flanka in terms of a sporting facility. And we're looking at other areas that could be considered uh, almost iconic when you're finished with them. There's a Lawrence Tavern vending stall this year. Which, which is intended to provide a, a, a rest stop that we can all be proud of. So our idea of destination assurance is that from the minute you book for Jamaica, you should have an experience that is hassle-free. You shouldn't have any issues to do with major security problems or anti-harassment initiatives which fall within our purview. Um, or anything to do with a safety concern about our ability to respond, whether it is food safety or other emergency situations, and certainly seamlessness, which is the smooth movement of individuals from our accommodations to our attractions, and so on. The details of the line items, I think the members may have some questions about, but as far as an overview goes, I think the agency is certainly proud of what it has been able to do in providing that assurance in the mind of the visitor. Clarification. I, I see where you, 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 in talking about the Spruce Up program, you said that they could help with the security aspect of it and, and with PSRA. I, I, I don't know if I missed something. You want to just elaborate on that? So, a part of the Spruce Up may very well be to get the human capital ready for the development that is to take place within a constituency. So, for example. Who, who would, who would, yeah, but this is. This spruce up is directed by the members of parliament. So you have had members of parliament who have done this project that you speak of. 
Yes, there are members of parliament who have determined, for example, out of the four million or three million, depending on the year that it is, I will use a million dollars to get my people Team Jamaica certified, which is a mandatory uh, certification. So I want to get the people in the community ready to be able to embrace whatever other development is to take place. And what's interesting about it is that Spruce Up has, for many members of parliament, been one that is phased. So a member of parliament may very well decide that $4 million is insufficient to have impact. So I'll use $4 million this year to do this, the other $4 million next year to do this, and at the end of, of my, my tenure, what I would have is something that we can all be proud of as a significant community tourism project in the, in the constituency. That include community centers too? Because I see yeah, yeah. community yeah. centers and things like that in their, in their list of of spruce up items. Yes, remember, it's, it's interesting. A number of members of parliament have determined that certainly one of the ways to engage the community and to energize the community to, to, to move into a space where they can receive guests. Because we think of tourism as experiential tourism. So to have people moving through a space, you need to energize the community. And some members of parliament have actually said, and the truth is you really can't separate community tourism from community development broadly. And so we have made allowances um, in a number of cases, I think there's one in Manchester, one in um, St. James, and a few others who have decided that the community center is a way to, to energize. No, and, and training. No, I said and training. Yes, as well, because that, that provides a facility for the training as well. Hmm? No, and training. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Just as a, you you actually, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get, I think what we were trying to get and where Member Phillips was going was the idea, the actual cleaning up of the towns, the resorts, the, 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 so you would have Kingston, Port Antonio, um, Ocherios, I, I think you still have Falmouth as part of Montego Bay or, it, it, well, it's been separated in this. Montego Bay and of course Negril and the South Coast. You have a maintenance program. Is that correct? Yes. So I was correcting that to say that the maintenance program resides on the Tourism Enhancement Fund's budget and we've been asked to be project managers over its execution. So this 500 million is, all right, and so that's the maintenance. Now this is separate and apart from what had was being done as the IDB project before that was doing the North Coast Highway or is it incorporated into it? Our program is the program that has already been in existence for years with the National Solid Waste Management Authority. It used to be called All Island Maintenance, now renamed Tourism Resort Maintenance. Yes, right, but what I'm, what I'm getting at is that there was one that was doing, let's say, the North Coast Highway from Portland right across. Is that this program? Or no, it's, it's it not. I'm actually not familiar with that program. Huh? I'm not familiar with that program. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm sure I saw something in it. P.S., you know what I'm talking about, huh? Yes, Chairman, I'm aware of the program. It wasn't a tourism program. It wasn't tourism driven. Exactly, but right. it was assumed by tourism. In other words, no. tourism is doing the maintenance of that entire strip now. Yes, because so what we did at first, we ensure that um, where we were doing were separate from the areas done on the IDB project. That program ended, and so um, the revised program we're doing now would include some of those areas. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, okay. So you have that 500 million, and then there's a resort upgrading program which is 355. What's the difference in scope? Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Um, Chairman, so the resort upgrading program is intended to create areas of excellence in our resort areas. So the idea is that our focus this year will actually be Montego Bay, Negril, and Ocherius. Um, the scoping is just about complete in terms of the area that we'd like to look at. Uh, what we want to have coming out of this is that where people are entering our resort spaces, they can 
identify that, they are, that, that we have paid some attention. So upgrading as a separate activity from maintenance. All right. So in this, you, you, you have spent 70 million so far. That would be? That was in, that was in. You haven't done the scoping, right? Right. In so that amount. Remember, for which one? For, for which upgrading, percent? resort upgrading. And paid 62. Right. Re resort upgrading program. Right. That, that line item, Chairman, was, um, we had some challenges that we had to be agile regarding. Uh, one of them would have been, and in terms of safety, security, and seamlessness, and destination assurance, we thought it was important as a policy directive to, to respond. Uh, we, there was an emancipence initiative, but also there was a response to the mosquito eradication situation that needed to be addressed in two particular areas. So we had looked at that in St. James, as well as in St. Anne. So what's the breakdown? So you said emancipence. Yes. So what was what happened in St. James and St. Anne? In St. James and St. Anne, it was a removal of bulky waste and ensuring that the the entire area did not uh, provide an area where mosquitoes could breed. But, but wouldn't that go for the other resort areas too? Yes, it would. Uh, but there was an urgent situation, certainly in our resort areas on that side, on the north, um, which required a, a joint up approach. For example, you will remember that there was the, the death of a child in, in Montague Bay in the hospital, and there were a number of issues surrounding that. So it was, a, it was an agile response in, in our resort areas to ensure that we didn't have a space where you had a large concentration of tourists and a so breakout so of dengue. Of that 70 million, how much was spent on that? On the, on the, that the overall dengue? No, that one that you're talking about. It's 50 that million between, between both areas. 50 million between both areas 25 million dollars clean up on average yes over what period of time over a two month period that's a lot of clean up well we had a very chronic problem Jim no I, I, I want to say to you well, the two points I would make to you is number one these are problems that exist in all if you identify it because of a something that happened in Ocho Rips sure. is one thing, but quite frankly, it's why you, if you have a program, that's why you'd wait till the program um, is, yes. is ju just as a question, and this 50 million was executed by whom? By the National Solid Waste Management Authority. Chairman, if I may make the point though about our other resort areas, because the, the, it was a, a partnership and the Tourism Enhancement Fund, actually when Dr. Wallace speaks, will refer to the other areas and the efforts that were made in ensuring that where we're having experiential tourism, we don't have that exposure for our guests. Yeah, but the point I'm making, just for clarity now, you have 355 million on the resort upgrading and 70 million spent. Now, my understanding is that there's some overlap, you're, you're, that some of the funding comes from TF, and so that you will have double accounting. You indicated before that to no, a maintenance no. program. Yeah. No, Chairman. I'd like to clarify. The first oh, well, item, tourism resort maintenance, yes. is a TEF line item. So you only have it in here? No. So in fact, when you ask for the revised, in the revised, we have taken that off our line item. Resort upgrading is a line item for us. Okay. So this program is your program? Yes. And the maintenance would be another? Right. And the other, right. the other 280 million is, is designed to treat with the proper upgrading of so our main resort So when areas. was that 25 million spent in Montego Bay and St. Anne? Uh, okay, around about when? I can give the exact month in a, in a short while. Yeah. So and it was around about similar works took place in the other resort here. That's correct. All right, so we we we, all right, we can go through that. <clears throat> I just want to pick up where you left off, um, Chair. So the, the 500 million is actually a TF line item, but you manage it on behalf of TF, and the implementing agency for this is who? The National Solid Waste Management right. Authority. But I'm seeing here where, and, 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 and 
following the line of, of questions. So this $500,000, $500 million is for really the highway beautification. N not beautification, m maintenance. So Highway maintenance. Yes, uh, yes. Beautification, maintenance, same thing. Yeah? Um, and then you have this 355, well, and then we have a spruce up which is which which here to to effect clean up beautification projects island wide for another 150 million which is on the TEF. Under TEF. Okay. And then we have this 355 million which comes under TPD line item um, for resort upgrade. But what is what is what where the spruce up is concerned? Right, which is on a TEF, that is fully, but under this streetscape or resort, um, the, 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 the beautification of oh, 500 yeah. million, only 91 million of this have been spent. And we are basically now ending the third quarter and about to start the yes. fourth. What is the reason for such slow pace of, of implementation? So. Thank you. Thanks for the questions. There's actually no slow pace of implementation. There's been a slow pace of the drawdown of funds. And in fact, we just submitted to the TEF on behalf of the NSWMA another payment, I think, of 191 million that's supposed to go to them now. But they have been executing the works. So ex what we have, have actually been reporting is a 60% completion of works from the NSWMA, but that the payments have not caught up. So they've now requested. We've checked to verify that the works have been done to satisfaction, and now we have made a submission on their behalf to the Tourism Enhancement Fund for funds to be paid over. So, okay, so the, the, they do the work and then submit yes. the invoices. That's correct, and we have um, supervisors on the ground that check periodically. What, they have a good cash flow. What, what then would now affect the slow pace of this 355 resort upgrade program? Yes, so that particular program, because we wanted to get it right, and there's more consultation to take place, we've actually done some design and some scopes and identified some areas, but we need to speak with members of parliament. We need to make sure that it, everything fits the bill, because we're going for Negril, we're going for Montego Bay, we're going for Otorius initially. Um, Give me an idea of, of the projects with this, because this, this is in, in, in its description, to ensure specific communities are cleared by removing overgrown vegetation, bulky waste. Right, so, so. so that description refers specifically to what has been done thus far, but the program itself is designed, for example, to have the planting of palms and the planting of vegetation and to make sure that areas are looking pristine and to make sure that wherever they, it, it is required that we do some painting and some sidewalks so and things much, like so that. So much consultation that we're in tech where you're, you have only spent 70 of the 355. I'm not saying that you have to spend it, right. but generally, and it's one of the issues that I have, is that we put these line items uh, in the budget, and you know we, we claim that slow implementation, and then it is unspent, or at the end of the financial year, we scurry to try and find something to spend it so that it don't go back to Ministry of Finance. Understood. Yeah? So, you know... Um, to plant palm trees don't really take much consultation. Which is not the only thing. The scope is a, a bit wider, but I will tell you this, that we're going resort era by resort era out of the three. So where we are, for example, is that with the Montego Bay, the St. James leg of it, we have actually submitted to our board for approval the components of those works. The next phase of that is that we're going to submit for approval the St. Anne component and then the Negril. So it's not that we haven't been scoping and doing what we needed to do. It's just that we actually have a fairly lengthy process, again, because two of the, the value of some of these things. Um, good morning. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, everyone. Um, again, I, I, you know, when I, when I speak, I also, also like to give compliments or pay compliments where it is due. And I'm very thankful for the work of both TEF and TPD Co. And I see, as a member of parliament, the effect of those two agencies on the ground. One other thing I want to say, though, um, the project that you're mentioning now deals with resort areas. 
But I like to, for you to specifically look at two other areas, maybe even now that are outside the resort areas, that can be classified as resort areas in quotation because tourists do pass those areas. And it's the, from Harbour View into um, near Cement Company, that, that verge, that, that median. I mean, it's, it's for a gateway to this country that requires priority. Eh? Yeah, that requires priority. I believe that, you know, if, if we want to give a good look to this country, then that is something that should be on a constant maintenance program. The other one is, and I actually took a video this morning of it when I was driving down, and it's the Hope Road um, between Sovereign and King's House. For persons who travel on it, you can look at it this evening if you do pass that area. It's, it's so overgrown and looks unsightly. And these two areas, I believe, that, that is in the heart, the one in Oak Road, and the one that is a gateway to this, to this city, you know, needs to be on a constant program. And I want to know if TEF or TPDCO could look at these two areas and morph them into this particular program that you do have. OK, uh, thank you, member. So the first area you mentioned, which is that area, as you mentioned, from Harborview Roundabout, is already on the radar. So there have been submissions. No, there have been submissions now um, by the case AMC for consideration for treating with that area and a longer term plan. Because one of the things we've said is we don't want to do this piecemeal and fragmented. We want to know what the overall plan is. And everything we do must be stackable and must lead to, to something we can all be proud of. What is not or has not been on our radar member is that whole Road area that you've mentioned. We'll certainly take a look, but I, I'm happy to say that that leg from Harborview um, has been receiving some attention, and we have submissions to us at this point. But what, what we don't want, um, Dr. Spence, is, is, is you know, is a ad hoc approach. You know, I really like to see it on a constant maintenance program because it 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 tells everyone that comes into the city from that area that you have arrived in the city of Kingston. Therefore, it cannot be on an ad hoc basis, but on a continuous basis, so that we can all be proud of, of, of that entry point. Mr. Chairman, I, thank you. I listened to my colleague making the. Yeah, it's a, you're, you're following on because yes. I had. What, what, what I, I'll, I'll just quickly. I mean, we do understand the need to, to have TPD or TEF, the ministry, involved as best as possible with the beautification. But I suspect what my goodly colleague is speaking about. There is the respond that is the responsibility of the KCC and it bears it, it bears to brunt the fact that what is really happening. You understand me? Even the I, I do understand and I pass along the Hope Hope Road in that era. And I'm wondering what is happening to the local authority, local government. Are they reneging on their duties? Let, let me just say to you, I, I, I think I think you are absolutely correct, Member Campbell. The, the, the point is this, that they are overlap. I'm sorry, Member Clark. My, you know that. <laughs> the, the 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 but the point is this, that while the sort of recurrent work would normally be done. The, the Tourism Enhancement Fund does have a duty to upgrade areas that are important to specifically their mandate of tourism. And one of the things that has always been a bit of a concern is that we spend all this time focusing on the Donald Sangster Airport and not recognizing that our other international airport is the Norman Manley Airport, which is what Member Don is speaking to. And I think the point that he's alluding to is not just the maintenance of it, but what can be done to upgrade it, improve it, make it better. And quite frankly, a project, a major project was left in place to redo the entire area coming in because it is felt that is something that we have got to tackle. That project seemingly was scrapped. Elements of it, one second, elements of it 
have been implemented, some of the roads resurfaced, but the actual holistic element has not been done. And I think that when we get to TF, it is one of the questions that must be asked. And in our recommendations, we must address the fact that these are areas that we must look at. But you can't spend all hundreds of million recurrently in, in, in Montego Bay, which is very important, of course, but not recognizing the, that the second international airport feeding, feeding St. Mary, feeding um, um, Portland, and the Kingston Resort area. <laughs> are, are it, it, so I think that it is something that we can look at in more. Mr. So Chairman, sir, what I want to point out is that whilst we, we, we laud and we accept the work that TF is doing, where that is concerned, yes, they can do a major one-off project to say that they enhance and beautify and bring it up to standard. But the maintenance is, is what Which is, is what of concern. Have, yes, and, and therefore we cannot that, ask too. them, whilst we can ask them to say, come on board, put in something monumental that it can be something that say, yes, we are in Jamaica. The, the simple maintenance of that area, Mr. Chairman, has to rely and be placed and where it is tasked to. executing agencies that have responsibility for it. Absolutely. Chairman, uh, while, 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 while... I'm a number of persons. I had Member Jackson. I had Member Jackson. Um, I have Member Paulwell and Member Brown. So let, let's just take it in that order. Member Jackson. I just have a couple of questions. Uh, last week I made in the observation that all of these fancy names spruce up this, that, a um, large component of it translates in one word, debushing, mm -hmm. right, on a different rubric. You can have beautification. I have a concern, this is just an observation, and it's based upon experiences or other debushing exercise. The bush grow and it cut down and you get cut again. I just want to know what kind of oversight function is exercised, given the significant sums which are provided for it. I'll give you the three questions. To ensure that when payments are made for bushing, it's not the same bush that three times, it's not the same bush that was cut one time, but because it grew up, you can't come back three months to say it. You know. So that is one. The other one, um, you spoke a lot about the, the destination quality assurance, Dr. Spencer. And there is a current situation. Even driving here this morning, I was bombarded by um, video in the social media space about crocodiles in our beaches. I represent an area that, have a, that has a popular beach, Helsha. And I was learning from my community leaders that that video is not Elsha, but apparently somewhere in Westmoreland. But what struck me is that when it circulated on the beaches in Jamaica, it have implication for our destination product because we are known for beaches as part of our attraction. Something like this, I think your agency tourist board need to cauterize to, so that it doesn't damage the destination brand. That's the second item and more significant one. And the third one, kind of parochial, you'll promise to indicate whether or not the listing you supply for the constituency, the four million was an error, and you're telling me that it was actually 7.5. So you could just formally confirm that. All right, thank you, member. Uh, question one. The we have a very, very committed team at TPD, a solid projects team that, that's, very, that's very keen on ensuring that the taxpayers of Jamaica get value for money. When you talk about bushing, in fact, of the programs that we mentioned, um, the one that really is technically a maintenance bushing program is the $500 million program. The resort upgrading program is intended to be more than that. It is to uplift rather than to maintain. 
But I will say that we have, in terms of the mechanism, there are supervisors in all of our resort areas responsible for actually monitoring, uh, working with the NSWMA representatives and ensuring that we don't make a payment, which is probably, it explains the question by, by Member Phillips earlier. Why is it that so much work has been done and only 92 million of the 500 has been spent? Because we are insisting not only on the work itself that's been supervised, but that the paperwork, the documentation must support uh, before we issue any payment. So that's, that's carefully supervised, and we continue to do that. The, the matter of destination assurance and the crocodile situation, you're, you're quite right, it is a part of destination assurance, and the role of our destination assurance architecture is to coordinate the efforts of other agencies. So for example, NEPA, in a case like this. We've had situations already in Negril where we have had a destination manager respond on the ground, get NEPA involved, and the situation was cauterized. But there needs to be, I understand your point, a program for treating with matters such as this. So that's really our, our, our role with the assurance councils, is to identify the issues almost immediately and to coordinate the efforts. Because as an agency alone with with limited resources, the way to get this done is to get the experts who, who are best able. Fine, I agree. But this specific one, I just want your assurance that you will attend to it. Because it's, it's a no matter. Yes, we, the Destination Assurance Agency assures you that that will be handled. Um, and the final point of the, of the spruce up, uh, I, I know what happened in the case of said constituency was that what happened was that there was a, an amount, an allocation from a previous year which even though in a new council fund arrangement we would have lost, there are some times when we see a, a, a critical area that requires some more funding, if there is space that we can consider it on the basis of what was there before. So that's how, that's how the number is 7 million as opposed to 4. So that's my assurance. But I comprehend that. Very elegant statement of yours to mean that if the project demands more discretion will be exercised in that regard. As, as long as we get the directive and the, and the, and the approval so to do. Well, the reality is that usually members of parliament who want more than what is allocated evenly across the board would request via the, the minister and, and then the minister. Oh, so I will have words with minister yes, about it. Yes, and okay. he will give the instruction. Okay. Before I move on, just your destination assurance councils, how are they operating? I mean, what, what happens with them? I don't know if they meet or what, what, what I mean, I'm, I'm in a resort here, but I'm not quite certain what happens. Right. Okay, so the Destination Assurance Council comprises, first and foremost, a core membership, usually of about three individuals, and then all of the heads of the major uh, government agencies would have a seat on each council. We have, at, the, at this point in time, six councils. Uh, what would happen is that there is a uh, a destination manager. Sorry, and yes. you say they meet regularly? They do. Uh, there's a, there's a, yes, they, they, they meet regularly. In fact, some meet more than others because of just the energy in that space. But they do meet regularly. And we have all the minutes of such meetings and the agendas that we can share as well. So they meet regularly and we receive the information via the destination managers. I'll have to come back around to you, Member Dunn, but I remember Paul Well Brown was. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I had intended, before my colleague spoke, to raise Port Royal, and I will start with Port Royal, because we are told that a cruise ship will be docking sometime towards the end of January, and having visited I believe that the infrastructure will be in place. I had doubted it at first, but it appears as if it's going to happen. Um, Port Royal isn't ready. Well, it won't be in January for friendly faces to greet cruise shippers. And uh, I'm in touch. We're working with Port Authority and the UDC. But what role is the Ministry of Tourism going to be playing in this important development? Um, also, now that it appears as if much of the economic opportunities, at least initially, 
won't reside in Port Royal because they just don't, don't have the commercial business that is going to be available come January. It will take some time. So a lot of people will be leaving, landing in Port Royal, but leaving Port Royal to go and travel elsewhere. And this is where the elegant corridor project that the former minister had developed comes in. And it's not only that back road, um, the Flores de Glass Pole and Michael Manley Highway, but Windward Road. And the aim was to create this elegant corridor to take it from Windward Road all the way to Ellison Road and even into downtown. Um, that is a project that has been on the books in the both TPD Corps, Ministry of Tourism, and um, the Works Agency. I believe that it requires now a greater sense of urgency to get that project going. But what are you doing for January 2020? Yes. Um, um, thank you, Member. One, 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 uh, second, uh, one second. Sorry, not to cut you. Um, uh, Member Paul, I just I, I understand, but just to bring you up to speed, um, at the last meeting, we had, we had had a, a, a long discussion on the Port Royal project and indicated, and tourism had indicated that they're working with UDC and and the Port Authority and that their role, they're, they're, they're assisting, but in a secondary role. Now, out of the discussions, again, this morning, we, as the, the, the colleagues, we had determined that what we plan to do based on that is to invite UDC Port Authority and and maybe even just the necessary persons who would be involved directly from the tourism just to get a holistic view because we, we felt that we're getting it in a disjointed manner. So I, I think it's it, we are in the same wavelength but I think that their element of it is just a small part and I think unless we can get it all together but we do have concerns that while it may be ready what we are going to offer we must be careful because you know we, if our product is not up to standard and when i say product the image of what port royal is in in person's might has a very strong brand we have to ensure that the aspirations of persons coming to see that brand that the reality can match it so we're going to have that discussion. And, and also, there was a fulsome discussion on getting the approval. There was supposed to be additional um, infrastructure, such as sewage and others, and we don't know where that is at. So I think it may suit us to, 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 to pull it together. And we were indicating that if we were able to finish today with tourism, we would invite the others at that time. All right. So. If you have something you want to do. Just, just to respond to the friendly face issue, uh, member, um, the TPD, because secondary role in all of this as a part of the Ministry of Tourism is that we have offered to do our Team Jamaica training and tour guide training, this intervention, with all of the individuals who are interested from that space so that they can be a part of it and they can be ready. It's a very solid program. So that's our intervention at this point. Coming from last meeting, Chair, and I've watched it just mentioned because it has been on my mind since Madam Pierce. The issue with the UDC project in Montego Bay because you said that that, that is on TF's budget. Yeah? The Dump Up Beach, the Close Harbor Beach is on TF's budget. But it is, it, it, it basically, UDC is the implementing entity and the money is paid directly from that's correct the, the from so Ministry it's a joint project between the UDC and the tourism enhancement fund the we had placed it in our budget that we submitted to the Ministry of Finance in the TEF's yeah. budget um, upon their approval of the budget what they did was they redirected that amount for that project directly through their line ministry rather than it being on the TEF's book. So it's not on the TEF's books in their budget for the, uh, in so this. It's on UDC books? It's on the, in, in the Ministry of MEGJEC. 
economic growth, growth and job creations for that project. For that project. Right. Economic and our, our budget was reduced by that amount. So, and then you had the issue of the, the training of the, pol the district constables, which is a similar. So that, that is on the line item of which ministry? Ministry of National Security. But then it is a, a program that, it, that used to be done by TPDCO. Yeah? So how is it now that TPDCO manages that since it is now on the... How is it that you prevent then those that you are, the police is training for that purpose of the tourism sector, not going to the police work with the SOE? How is it that you, you manage that now? Uh, yes, member. So the, there's an oversight committee now which comprises the, the, the head of our visitor safety department, uh, retired military, who sits with an ACP who manages that program through the JCF and a number of other functionaries who determine what happens. So we have an MOU which allows us some input into the process and it, it, it helps us to yes. suggest deployment and the like. So, it, it, why, Madam Pierce, let me tell you why I'm raising it. Because at the last time, these are projects that are TF, TP, DECO. It is, and, and coming off of the UDC one with the Port Royal, with Port Authority, the late entrance of, of the Ministry of Tourism itself to be involved in. Yeah? And if we're going to be spending the money and it is for the purpose of, it shouldn't be that you are invited to. You ought to be a part of that decision-making body from, from day one. And, and, and it keeps coming back to me because we made a mistake with Trelawney, with Falmouth. And it's as if we're making the same mistake again with Port Royal. And we're trying to still make catch up with Trelawney. And it's as if we haven't learned from it. And we keep speaking about join up government. But it only join up sometime and when it's convenient. Right? Because when I did my own little research, you still don't have enough district constables. Uh, we have a full, we should have a full complement of 200 district constables throughout the resort areas uh, for different reasons, whether resignations and the like. We're now operating at 169, so we're short on 31 district so constables. So you're basically up to scratch where you want to be? Well, um, we want to be at 200. Yeah. We want to be are at 200. you getting the, the, seeing that the line item is going to the Ministry of National Security, do you feel comfortable that the TPDCO has control over those bodies in doing the work that TPDCO is expecting? So we have been trying to certainly insist on some systems, and the systems, I think, help us. So for example, we'll know where individuals are deployed at a particular point. In fact, one of the things we requested from the JCF, which they've done a fair job of giving to us, are supervisors on the ground. We found that when you had these individuals located in these spaces without proper supervision, then their response to the needs of anti-harassment would have been limited. So, yes, they're signing books now at each location, so we know where they are. We, so there are things that we're doing. We're, we're, we're fighting to ensure that we assure the destination. All right. No, I have Member Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Dr. Spence. Spencer, sorry. In, re in regards to the resort for upgrading, you spoke to um, priority areas like St. James, Anova, Westmoreland, and I, I figure you're referring to the township and its surrounding. I, I'm just wondering, the parches that lie between, because these are not adjoining parches, the parches that lie between these parches, what plans have you for the upgrading? Uh, yes, so we're, we're taking a phased approach to making sure that the entire country can be seen as a proper resort. And so while we don't have some of these spaces in phase one for this year, we are certainly looking at some of those connecting areas for the next financial year. All right, Member Vance. Thank you, Chairman. Um, 
two things. One, the read the Spruce Up Jamaica program. This year I noticed it has been taking a bit longer than normal. I'm not sure what has happened with read the project implementation. If there is a procedural change with regards to what you were doing compared to what you were doing before, but I noticed it has taken a lot longer for the projects to be implemented, especially well in my constituency, I know that even though the time we submitted was relatively the same as, as before. So that is one particular question. And secondly, um, with regards to the Roaring River area, two different things. Probably Dr. Wallace might have to answer part of it. Read the park, the divestment of the park, or what are the plans for TPD or TF with regards to how we move forward the park, and what timeline are we looking at with regards to what we are doing. And another thing would be the road going up to, to Roaring River. As in, I know recently there was some approval with the board. I also want to know also where that process is and what timeline we're looking at. Because as we speak now, because of the conditions of that particular road, one, you know, it's going to attraction, and two, the safety also of those who are traveling on it. Because there are a lot of robberies happening now because of the condition of it. Because you have to definitely actually come to a halt when moving on that particular thoroughfare. So I just want to know where we are with those particular things now as we start. All right. Um, thank you, member. The, on the matter of the... Sorry, Doc. Before you speak, just to add to what my colleague is saying, the, the component of lighting in that same area and also the security, because Rural River is set, and up, set apart from the yeah. rest of the country, so to speak. The rest of the, the areas. The, 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 where it is located is a This is where it is, yes. A, a, in, in other a, words, a, the, road, a, the road to the attraction could do with some additional lighting. Lighting plus security of, of, the, of those who use that area. All right, uh, yes, thank you, members. The, on, on the specific matter of member vases, um, implementation of his spruce up. I suspect I know what may have happened in your case. You've always been one of those who submitted on time and therefore we would not have had the deluge that we have now. But with the new process what we have is a lot more spruce up projects in-house, which is a good thing. But we assure you that you will not lose your funding and, we, and your project will be executed. So it's just that those who would have normally been more active will see a slightly slower pace because more are active at this point because of the new mechanism. Uh, re Roaring River, I will allow Dr. Wallace to speak on the road, but the park itself is on a list of uh, uh, entities or managed properties by the TPDCO that we want to divest the management for. It's on the, our list. It's second on the list now. And so to give a timeline would depend on how quickly we're able to get number one done. Um, Number one has started, that process has started. So we had a, a few upgrading works to do at number one, and we've, we've done those works, and now we're about to go to, to open one. tender on that, and what's Roaring River is next in line. What's number one? Uh, rafting on the Rio Grande, so rafters rest. All right, uh, member Don. Thank you, Chairman. Wait, um, wait, 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 I, I think. What I don't want to do is to take it in because I know to see have the roads in general. I think we need to. Go ahead, member. Thank you, sir. Um, destination marketing and um, product enhancement. And the product here I'm going to speak about now is Jamaica, not in a specific area. Um, I'm always of the mindset that our flags, our flag denotes who we are. It, it, it identifies a visitor when they come that we are proud and free and a nation that, that is in tune with itself. I am suggesting that, that and I did suggest it to the Minister of um, Culture, Gender Affairs, um, and it's a product maybe that TEF could actually look at, is to install a flagpole and a flag at every major point in this country. So we would have one, have, we would, would have one at Harborview, at that roundabout intersection. We would have one 
in Montego Bay. We'd have one in Otrius as they come off the, the main highway. We'd have one in Port Antonio. We'd want, have one in Great, um, around about in Anata Bay, um, sorry, near Anata Bay. We have one in Savlamar. The point I'm making is that we have a flag up in every major area that, that, that says to a visitor, here you are, you are in Jamaica, the land where you should be, the place where we are proud of. So is it a project that TEF could take on to install a flagpole and a flag at all of these major points in this country? Uh, just, like, just like many projects, um, there are a lot of things that we can do to, to, to enhance Destination Jamaica. And, um, and we're open to looking at all the, um, the submissions. We are focused, and I guess when my, it's my time to speak, I'll tell you about the, the policy focus that we have um, in particular for the, for the TEF. Um, but but we, we are still open to looking at um, a variety of projects that enhance Destination Jamaica. Yes. Um, member Clark, you had, you had. thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to make mention of this matter from my colleague Philip was speaking about the close harbor development. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, sorry, I was sent a WhatsApp. MP Clark, good afternoon. My brother was taking some tourists to Bottom Road, passing by KFC, and Bottom Road is Kent Avenue. Jimmy Cliff Boulevard in Montego Bay. Somebody wrote debt to the Jews on the zinc, and that is a hoarding at Close Harbor. The tourists found it disturbing. Can you address this, please? We have to protect Jamaica brand. And this is a, a, a message that I just got. I'm just asking, I don't know how true it is, but I'm still, we, we don't take these things for granted. I just asking that if a contact could be made to the contractor in that area so that if it is so, that we can quickly remove it with some paint, please. Also, the hoarding is being done with zinc. But Mr. Chairman, it is left just like that. I thought more or less that with the whole idea of spruce up and beautification, that some artistic work could be done on the hoarding for the time being, being that it is going to be there for maybe a year or more, you know, just to enhance the year, not just a beer zinc. Yes, uh, member, thank you. In the same way that you received an urgent WhatsApp, I sent out an urgent WhatsApp asking someone the destination manager as well as the security person to check on that for me regarding the comment. And I, I you have a response right, to just on the on the actual sign, the zinc itself, what we had uh, suggested to the UDC is to actually provide advertising opportunities along that central spread of real estate there to, um, to actually go beyond just making it look good but making money from it. Next, Mr. Next, Mr. Chairman, the, ele the elegant corridor. Making, I just want sorry, making money from. Yes, I got you. Got you. Yeah, sorry. I, I the didn't hear. Elegant corridor, Mr. Chairman. I just want to advise my goodly friend from the Kingston Centre, St. John, St. Catherine area, that the spruce up. It is very tedious to maintain because grass grows quickly. And it is very unsightly. After two or three inches of growth, it becomes so unsightly. So at all times, the maintenance team has to be out there doing the work to keep it cut and pruned. But, but Mr. Chairman, the, the thing that I want to bring forward to the, this meeting is the same elegant corridor and the furnitures, the furniture, sorry, that was paid for by TEF money. Mr. Chairman, the motorists that use that roadway, they just damage everything. But who replaces? And we must bring the law to bear that road furniture must be replaced by a motorist if damaged by that said motorist before. And we must tie it with something, Mr. Chairman. But TEF, TPDCO, 
has to play a role to say that we are spending the upfront money. The government of the day must help us to hold those who are perpetrators to books mm. to make sure that they, that funding, because you are now going to ask along the corridor, Mr. Chairman, you would have more than 30 lamp poles that are down. The signage are down. And it was hit down or knocked down by a, mo a, a motor vehicle. And we have to also partner with JCF for them to provide the information so that you can go after the person who is at fault. It's something that we, we need to look into. Also, Mr. Chairman, I, don't, I am not very understanding, very much understanding of certain things, but from a layman point, the road marking materials that are used in that era, the paint, after two or, or, or three shower of rain, you know, you don't see anything more, you know, mm -hmm. the entire mm -hmm. strip, you don't see no coloring to help you. The reflectors that are placed there, after two or three drive over, you know, the then gone. Yeah. So you're left on the median. Many a times, I, 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 that is my hometown, so I drive it so often. But you don't know where the median is at, at some point, you know, because there is nothing to indicate, oh, you are right there on the median, because the color, the color. I thought, I thought because, your hometown, because I thought your and, and, and was the, the funding, Mr. Chairman, may look humongous, because guess what? Those who are implementing, and I know it is not TF who actually, or TPD who actually does that. It is contracted out. The, the material may, of, may be of some inferior product. Quality. And therefore, it just it looks good when you put it on. But within a week or two, you are back at square one. It, Member Clark, I, 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 I think we, we have the same problem. Um, I, I don't know if it's a material or what. Two years ago, it came even in Parliament, just a discussion about who is going to be held accountable. Uh, the, the cars that meet in the accidents damage the, the, the road furniture, and whether or not the, there is a role for when that happens, that whether it is insurance, whether it is a person driving, but for it just to be left to the taxpayer is a problem. And I think. What we had come out of it is that there are a number of agencies that are primarily involved. In this case, the parish council, or the municipal council, and the NWA. And we had tried to push it. And I think that is something that, again, where we, 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 we need to raise back to the fore because it is something that, um, that on this point, yeah, it's something that I think recommendations, because we talk about it, but nothing happens. And quite frankly, the, the persons, when they're at fault in these accidents, they, they walk away from it, the insurance companies walk away from it, and it's left um, as the responsibility of the taxpayers. Th Member thank, you th th thank you, Chair. Um, well, I think Member Don, let him, I think he's on that point so that you can roll all the response into one. Thank you, Chair, and I'm going to leave shortly, so I just want to make a point. On that same point, um, with just, not with, just with road marking, but, but with directional, do you know these little arrows that they put on this, like on the, in a corner to prevent people from going straight or going over a precipice, is that within the scope of your, your your thing because there, there's one which I've approached NWA on chairman in um, Anata Bay that there's so much accident that happens there with, with tourists, and, tourists and others and we have just not been able to get that direction. Well, that would primarily be the NWA. Right. I so think that's that what I where they help is with the funding and, and otherwise. Member Jackson.
in the report, the November report, um, there are some items, particularly one that we had asked some question on, on page 27, the request for members who have been sent, who have been on suspension. Um, Peru is in the list in here. I see where the list has some that have gone. Which we are in. Page 27 in of the, the November report. Of the annex. Supplementary, I think. Mm -hmm. um, if you look, there have been some disciplinary action taken against some of the persons, and they have returned to work. 21 days, 3 days, 5 days, 7 days, 3 days. Starting with the the sixth person on the list. Left on effective date January 31st yeah, this yeah. year. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, yeah, Winston McCain. Six. Yeah. Yes. Let's, let's not use okay. the names. Just a marker, as a marker. To investigate allegations brought against him. That's oh. January 31st. No, 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 no. The list is there. It's a, it's a table document, you know. No, just understand. I start from that one on the list. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, man, record of it. Um, that one has been out since January 31st. And then you have some January 31st, January 10th for the other three below. Now is November. What is the status of those? Why they are still out 10 months now, one and two. What are the complaints um, um, on these cases, just where they are? Because that's a long period for no action. Just, just as a matter of interest, you have four persons here who all went, were sent on administrative leave. One on interdiction and three on administrative leave, and they have all been off, well, to this day for, for the 11 months. Is it one case, or is it, an, or is it separate incidents that we're dealing with? Okay. Um, right, Chairman and members. So to start with the first one, which is interdiction, mm -hmm. uh, January 31st. Um, you see in the, in the notes that a number of allegations have been brought over a period which relate to performance management in the case of that individual. That one is performance management? Yes. Okay. Yes. The, and to answer the question, Chairman, that case stands by itself. Okay. The other individuals on the list uh, relate to questions of sexual misconduct, and it is not that they have been off without action. In fact, they've returned now, but to explain what happened in the period while they were off. Their situation started where we brought the charges against the individual in November of last year, mm -hmm. and the person was required to respond to charges. The initial hiccup was that there was a challenge about disciplinary policy for uh, disciplinary procedures for public bodies, which has a clause which said 3.2.3.3, which indicates no disciplinable action and 3.2.3.4, which indicates disciplinary, disciplinary action. The sticking point was that certainly the, the accused indicated that we ought not to have moved past the first clause because there was no reason for disciplinary action. That was the first sticking point. The second thing was that we decided we're still pursuing because we take these things very seriously. Having pursued and insisted and said that we were basing charges on a preliminary investigation the accused then asked for a formal investigation. Now the process allows for either, but you want in the interest of fairness. So in order to have the formal investigation take place, that is when the individuals were actually sent on leave in the period. So, so, so the accused and the accused that were sent... Well, Everybody was asked to leave because in, in the interest of sterilizing the space and ensuring that we had the documentation that we needed to, to do the formal investigation, then each individual was invited in for a one-on-one -on -one with the independent investigator so we could have an investigation report and move forward. So just to walk you very quickly through the chronology. That having happened, when, the, when, the, when we got the report close to the summer of this year, June, July, 
the accused then got legal representation which indicated again to us that the process was flawed and therefore they have a challenge with how the formal investigation itself was conducted that having happened we are now at the stage where well it went to an inquiry and the chairman of the tribunal indicated that the lawyers ought to go back to the local level to have a discussion before the inquiry happens so that was the last thing that happened having completed the formal investigation we saw no reason to have them out of the organization so they're all back reassigned um the individual now has a portfolio which is separate from what so hold on, hold on, hold on. when you brought them all back when sec no 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 just yes. just to make the point mm -hmm. sexual harassment is a very serious allegation yes to be made or you sent them all off and uh, after all that you mentioned you brought them all back in the same space not to work closer together but in the same organization so uh, in fact the individual who has been accused has no direct reports at this point for example nobody reports work is working on a special project on his own which is our iso uh, certification which we really want to get our international certification so that's a particular project working in isolation and the person of the competence or not yes assignment. absolutely absolutely and the other one that was the accused yes the accusers now is it more than one accused it's, it's two it's two accusers two what? accusers against the same person yes the other two one uh, reports to our product development department which required some help in the area of property management you'll hear that we have roaring river rio grande that needed some admin assistance and the other actually reports to my office the executive office um, helping to do admin work related to research for a number of things that i have to do in terms of the so organization all, all of those been happening over the 10 month period all of what since yeah. we brought them back since that's what they've been them, doing how long after they were brought back they were brought back nine and a half months after. Nine and a half months? Because of all that I explained that happened in terms of so the hiccups. So they were out for nine and a half months getting paid while this process was going on? Yeah, I must say, member, that my own feeling about the HR process during that time is that it was unfortunately inefficient. And the truth is, we could not have that going on forever. Hence, the, the, the re-invitation for them to resume work and be redeployed and, and, be, and be away from each other. But following on that comment, I, I meant to have asked earlier on, when the claim about the process that was being pursued were made, did you seek outside consultation for guidance in terms of HR procedures, yes, like the Ministry of Labor? We didn't go to the Minister, Ministry of Labor, but we got legal advice on, on how to proceed. No, so after in that ten month period, it's a nine months they were out. So about a month is how, how, how long now since uh, they're since they've back been now? back, they've been back about three weeks now. Three weeks? Yes. So is in November here they, they came back? Yes. And they're all working fine? Uh, well the one who works for me is working out fine. Um I, I haven't had reports yet in terms of performance of the others. I know that the person who has a special project, the accused, who's working on ISO has met with all the key individuals, gathered the data, and is to produce a report shortly. And the third one? So one that worked directly with you and then the ISO one, the third one? Right, the other one, I, I haven't had time to get a performance review as yet. Mm. So it has not been concluded as we speak. That's basically it. And right. my concern is that how long, because quite frankly, Dr. Spencer, 10 months, 11 months is a long time for this to be hanging around and people uncertainty yes. that comes what, with it. What, 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 just to, to cut you, you're saying that a, a judgment has not been made Where I was going on the no. situation. You have just, so you took them out for 10 months? Nine months. Nine months. And, and obviously you brought them back around the time that well, issues were raised in the public forum about. Well, I wasn't about aware that issues were raised in the yes, public forum, to yes. be honest. But, but I, I, I made the point that everyone was brought back but even then, the issue has not, not been resolved. For the resolved. And, and so how do you proceed from here? Uh, right. So that's a, actually a very good question. So the, the issue has not been resolved for the same reasons that the issue took as long as it did. The matter of the, the, the lawyers having an issue with the clauses. Now, where we are is if you have had a problem with the process, and this is how, certainly what the board feels about it. If you say the process was flawed, we will offer, since the actual inquiry did not get off the ground, 
to redo the process in an independent space. So the, the two things we've looked at, one, certainly it probably ought to have gone to the Ministry of Tourism, and we still think that's too close. So we, the matter is now being referred for the, for the Attorney General's um, department to, to handle. Because if the argument is that a, an objective tribunal or investigation cannot be had, you certainly don't want even the accused to be of the impression that you're not following up a particular process. So the, the intention of the board is to have this thing resolved quickly, but we can't do it internally. But Dr. Spencer, I can say without reservation, nine months is an awfully long time. When you have complaints like mm -hmm. sexual harassment against a staff member, and you took as long as nine to 10 months to reach to some resolution that even as we speak now, the process is incomplete. Three weeks ago, the three persons are brought, they were all brought back, not in the exact space, but in the mm -hmm. organization, and a resolution is not yet in, in, um, in sight. My question to you now, Dr. Spencer, those three persons, and I'm more particular about the accusers, because they would have been the receiving and the victim of the harassment, so it's all allegation, no Allegations, process yeah. of their employment benefits and so forth. Has it been? Well, have they been out on 100%? Um, yeah, they were not. They were not at all affected um, in, their, in their all benefits. the benefits that would normally accrue. Correct. Um, incentives and all of those things that they would normally accrue. Yes, sir. They, have, they were paid during the period they were off, all those emoluments that normally accrue with employment? Yes, but not for the, they've been paid for the period, not necessarily during the period. So, they, so the, during the period, they were not necessarily being paid? They were being paid their salaries, but certainly there were questions, for example, about an in incentive, and we, con we conferred with the Ministry of Finance, and, and those have been paid. Those have been settled? Yes. So, and that will be done for the entire period? Yes. See, my concern is that somebody ought not, a, a, an employer, whether in the private or the government employment, ought not to suffer an injury if they never did anything wrong or you establish that they did right. something wrong. That right. would be an injustice. But you are confirming definitively yes. that all the emoluments flowing from their employment, if not settled, will be settled? Yes. And, and in fact, um, unless there was a performance challenge for a previous period, which we've had, um, once there's no performance challenge in terms of the scores from a supervisor yeah, and a super, that will that, that, that will be settled. So lastly, you have a projection of when this matter should be brought to a conclusion. And uh, to be honest with you, Member, I would love for it to be brought to a conclusion tomorrow. The, the, the issue for me is that in following the legal process and ensuring that on every side of it, the TPD is correct. As I've said to you before, my regret with the issue is the inefficiency with which the HR department has handled the matter. And, and to be honest with you, when we refer it, we will refer it certainly as a matter of greatest urgency to have the inquiry, to have it concluded, and wherever the, the, the chips fall, they may. Are those, those, those issues with the HR, is it inadequacies or, in, or incompetences, or both? I think, I, I would still like to go back to call it an inefficiency, and in fact, HR manager who was handling the matter has since left, um, and now we have, uh, in my estimation, someone who is very aggressively trying to put these matters to bed. Okay, so you are improving HR? We are improving department. HR. Mr. Spencer, they, they, just to follow up on this, and, and purposefully, I think it's we're rightfully not really calling the names or doing anything like that, but you would have gone through the investigation. Some of this has played out in different fora, some on social media, different places. There's a, there have been discussions on this, and there are allegations that some of the reasons why it's taken so long and there are problems is because of relationships between persons and other persons in the ministry. You, you would have heard some of that or not? Well, yes, I, I hear some of it, but because I am committed to a process that is fair and that is by the book, despite its inefficiency, we're going step by step, and I tend not to try to get too distracted by such perceptions. The reality is that from my perspective, and certainly even with the inefficiency of the HR process, we have been following accordingly, and w doesn't matter who it would have been, we would have followed this process. All right. The, the second thing that I would ask is that 
some time ago here at the committee, uh, a, a, a question was raised that it was someone was proposed to be appointed to a board. If if an employee of your agency is to be appointed to a board, and obviously would have to sit, um, would have to take time to go to these board meetings and do other things. You'd be notified of this, would you not? Yes, but we'd normally be notified after the fact of the appointment, and certainly... You'd be notified after... After the fact, because so, it, it's, it's more an operations issue for us, and whether you would need time off from work to do... Yeah, but that... So your, your employee, etc., would not notify you or bring you into that loop? You, yes, after they're appointed. After they're, After they're appointed. I, I make the point because it was when it was brought up here that someone who was on leave, this long leave, yes. was actually proposed to be appointed to a board during that period of time. Mm -hmm. When did you, you heard about that during, after, or before? You, I or actually learned this particular one in the media. Oh, you heard about it in the media yes. and, and determined because I think it's something that we, we probably have to look at as well because those appointments certainly would affect yes. the agency in, in a sense. All right. I just wanted to Remember follow up. Uh, just to be clear, you're, you're saying that the alleged victims and the alleged perpetrator were all sent off at the same time? Yes, they were, Remember. Right, so they were both sent off at the same time, and that one of the terms Where's your, where's your, yeah, maybe, I, why don't you move laterally? <laughs> Right, and that's one of the terms of both parties being sent off, was that they were receiving their full salary. And they, did you say that they received their full monthly salary during the period, or was it at the end of the period? They received their salary during the period, and the matters of additional issues like seniority and incentive were things that some of them came towards the end of the period. Right, and the basis for resumption after nine months is that you were frustrated that the process was going too long? Mm. Or what was there a recommendation from the committee assessing the matter? Yes, there's a recommendation certainly that we only needed to have them out for the extent of the period for the formal investigation. So once that was concluded, it was, um, it was advised that they be brought back. And you're making sure that the parties, even on resumption of duties, are not in day-to-day -day no, contact? No, absolutely not very different departments and um, it's difficult to prevent passing someone in a hall but certainly they have no working relationship um members this is is very concerning to me and that we had this discussion at length when we were dealing with edna manley and i think the two of them in more ways than one are conjoined and it it really leads us to the policy of the government institutions with regard to issues of sexual harassment um, and otherwise. Now, there, 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 there are two sides to everything and you want to protect both sides, but one of the things that we must be very clear on is that within this context that persons feel that the system is not against those ladies that feel they're suffering harassment, or gentlemen or ladies, absolutely, that feel that they're under pressure. And, and, and when, they, when they report it, 
they now find themselves on almost indefinite leave and, and, and certainly in other institutions coming under pressure, it, it goes back to having a, a, a policy that is very clear and defined. Um, and, and I think that this is something that should not just be recommended to Parliament but to the Cabinet Office to really look at it so that there's a basic benchmark that goes across the, the entire government sector. I, I think it's something that has to be looked at because what I'm picking up here is that you, you, you have in this specific case um, one person on one side and two accusers, am I correct? And everyone is sort of off. It, it does create a problem. Uh, just to respond, I agree, um, Chairman, on the policy requirement. I think I've always been a proponent of that standardized situation. What I wanted to respond to, though, was that I don't think they're conjoined just from the pure perspective that we acted on day one. We brought the charges despite the feeling that charges ought not to have been brought, and we've been pursuing it step by step. Okay. Member, well, members, let, me, let us just welcome students from the... Jose, Ma Jose Mati Technical High School. Welcome to Parliament. I see Mr. Terrellong has arrived at the appropriate time. To <laughs> All right, Member Campbell. Thanks, Chairman. Um, I, I note that the party named that number six on the list um, for purposes of not disclosing that party's name. Um, Dr. Spencer, could you tell us what is the, 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 the period of um, employment uh, for which this person has been with the um What is the period? Yes. How long has he been? Um, yes. Number six. Number six. Um, that's reading from the, from the top of the page. Now. Prior to, yes. I, 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 know, I know who you're referring to. Uh, well, I'll get back with the exact date, but certainly prior to 2012. Uh, so we're, we're talking about upwards of seven years. Yes. And is upwards there of, upwards of seven years? Yes. And um, do, have you had um, performance issues over those seven years involving the? Well, the, the charges which have been brought actually span quite a significant period. I think as far back as 2015. Uh, so, there, according to what has been presented, there has been a, a so pattern over so some years. There's an accumulation of yes. uh, performance issues. Yes, yes. And, and which, these are outside the sexual harassment charges. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and could, could you tell me, um, in relation to what your entity uh, describes as sexual harassment, what is it? that you have determined as constituting um, sexual harassment within your organization? The definition of sexual harassment yes. in our organization? Uh, well, certainly at any situation that would allow for a particular individual to feel uh, uncomfortable about advances in the, in the workplace. Um, but so it's, there, there is no objective analysis of what constitutes? Correct. In fact, in response, it's one of the deficiencies we saw, in response to what has been this inefficiency, we are now crafting a very solid objective um, sexual harassment policy for the organization. So, so <laughs> that what relates to those charges then really uh, a, a, a very subjective assessment? And circumstantial what? in I, some I, cases. I feel uncomfortable because I don't like you looking at my dress and saying that it is cut nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, it, is, it is as simple as that. Because there was no objective criteria I, uh, set down by your entity for, the, for, for making such a determination. I, I, would, I, I don't think we can try the case I'm, I'm, specific in here, though. I'm sorry? I don't think we can try the case specific um, in well, here. Well, Chairman, what, what I want to get at is we, we have been here belaboring the point that it has been uh, has taken um, nine and a half months. No, and what I want to they establish have, no, no, no. is exactly what, been, why Dr. Spence and his team have, 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 fall, have fallen no. into error, if I may so describe it. No. Because if a team of lawyers come in there who are worth their salt 
they are going to rip this thing to shreds. And he's going to end, end up in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a situation where he has, having, if, he, if he were to decide to not pay over the period, at the end of the period, um, all kind of constitutional redress and payment to, to include interest, right? On, on, on those sums which, which remain outstanding. So I, I, I can really understand why it has really taken, t taken nine and a half months. And so so I, I don't think we ought to um, be belaboring the point about uh, how, how much time it has taken because they have to be very careful in these circumstances how they conduct these matters. No, and, and I don't think we disagree on that. I, I, but I do believe that, as we said earlier, the issue came to light back a year ago in November, they were sent on leave in January, and you're now back, and we still haven't resolved it. I'm just saying that there there is some balance that we have to, and I think maybe part of the problem is a lack of a clear policy, rules, and guidelines that outline how this is treated, which is what I spoke to. All right, um, Member Daly, you had you had just come, you had indicated? Oh, all right. Okay, um, I think we can move on from this point. Um, member, um, Dr. Spencer, just a point, and I think two years ago, I, I brought to this committee an issue that I had a concern about, and I spoke about in Parliament, about a number of persons that were employed to TPDCO. At that point in the discussion, I had indicated also that there's a, a line between the active politics and, and their work. Now, one of the things is it has been brought to my attention that subsequent to that, in recently one of the individuals has come out and indicated they are a candidate for a seat. Um, and it's, it's public. Now, the, the question is, how, how would that be treated by TPDCO? Mr. Chairman, before Dr. Spencer answer, I, I really don't understand what you're trying to say because we have not had anybody publicly saying that, okay, I am up for candidacy for any no, we have not. We have not. And if you that can, pro if you can prove to us, then I will agree to. I will uh, agree with you that Dr. Spencer answered the question. Right, but I rather than ra it, in, instead of that, or anything outside of that, Mr. Chairman, I humbly ask that you ask the goodly gentleman not to respond to the question that you ask, no, no, no. Mr. Let, Chairman. No, you have heard, no, and you please. have, Mr. Please. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, we must follow protocol. We must follow protocol, and protocol dictates that unless it is made known in a certain circumstance or circle, or circle then we cannot come here with here's the argument to ask technocrats to, to verify and to formalize, Mr. Chairman. And it is very sad, it is very sad, Mr. Chairman, that you are the person who is asking that question. Most appropriate. So let me, let me, let me repeat. The first thing is I've, I, I am willing to, to share with you the person. Please, no, I'm, 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 I'm speaking to you, member. I, I, will, I will give you all the information. I have been very clear that what I have But asked, Mr. Chairman, I asked no, for please, the member, information member, before. Member, please, could you listen? before you jump to a defense. I am listening, of, of I am listening Mr. No. Chairman. You are hearing the side talker, not me. You can't talk on this is the I'm not the one speaking. No, You're hearing Fitz. You're hearing Fitz. And I'm hearing Dwayne Vaz who does not have the floor. And you're not the chairman, so you can't instruct me to turn off my mic. All right, members, please. So All you right. understand the situation, yeah, Mr. Please. Chairman? So let, me, so let me be very clear. I will share. I will share. The, please, member, we're having a conversation. I will share the information with you. I have been very clear. I'm saying to Dr. Spencer that with that information, how would it be treated with as an agency? If an employee is 
declares himself openly as a candidate, how would that, how would he deal with it under what governs TPDCO? Uh, please use your as mind. to whether the person is an employee as opposed to a contractor. Well, good point to make. I don't know. I, I think Dr. Spencer has a, a clear idea. He could answer And, I, on and both. again, Mr. Chairman, I think he and can again, answer Mr. Chairman, on both. Mr. Chairman, are you asking how the agency would deal with a situation? Not that there is a situation. Because if there is a situation, as you are alleging, Mr. Chairman, then I am asking you to provide, provide us with the information, whether it being a I've printed already, media. I've already agreed to do so, Member Clark. You so, don't have so, to so please, Mr. Chairman, provide it now, and then I no, will, no, no, will I, agree with you so, no, to, so to have please, Mr. Dr. Spencer. Mr. Spencer. No, I would, I would so like to hear how it's dealt with. Go ahead, Dr. All, the only thing that hits home, Mr. Chairman, is our, our, our continued way of doing things outside of protocol with Member Fitz Jackson as the lead. <laughs> I need I would, some protection would, from this. I, I, I will not attack by my colleague. Member I will Jackson apologize, needs Mr. no Chairman. protection at all. No. So I would like, I would like the question. The, the question that's been asked is that an employee of an agency such as DPDCO, who declares themselves as a candidate, how is that dealt with? Given, given, and how is it viewed with? Because they are, as the permanent secretary, please, members, they are, as the permanent secretary knows, staff orders that govern the civil service in general. So I just want to get an idea of where we are with it. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, just to be clear, but has there been such a public announcement by any employee of TPD Corps or any such agency making such yes, declaration? absolutely. I think the individual themselves has made that, have made that, 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 that indication. Absolutely. Oh, okay, all right. Well, I'm, so. okay, all right. The, the, Mr. Chairman, unless you're asking what the policy is from the agency standpoint, but it cannot be that you're alleging that situation, Mr. Chairman, because guess what? You must now provide to us, you must now provide to this committee the printed media or the... the, 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 the Mr. Chairman, Ms. No, yes, Clark. give us the video clip. No, no, no. Give Please, us the video Member clip. Clark. I am not Member Clark. Member Clark. Mr. I Chairman, am not. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, we are in a democratic state, and a democratic state says that every single resident has the right, has the right to support. We have seen situation, you can't tell the person that, oh, because I'm working with a government agency, I am not able to say that I am a part of a, a, a group. No, you can't. We have that democratic right, Mr. Chairman. And if, if somebody is expressing all of that, so Members. unless the Members. chairman can provide Members. us with that piece I, of document. I, I certainly will. And, but I am still, and we could go down this road May I, may I just all invite day, you to resolve the, the issue this way? At the end of the day, way. the question will stand. Yes, Member Chairman. Chairman, may, may I just ask you to resolve the issue this way? Could, could it be put to Dr. Spencer um, to provide an answer as to what the institution's policy is? That's what I'm doing, uh, uh, Member I, I Campbell. Think, if I did is, not if it, ask it, of him to If indicate. it is framed that way, I think uh, Dr. Spencer is quite... It is in a position. To Absolutely. Answer. But I, I think outside of that, I, I think it would be a which little is, unfair which is, to him. No, I, I have not. Dr. Spence, I don't know if you have misinterpreted me as, as maybe no, my, no, my I, colleagues I have. I have I, that would, wait, wait, no. Wait. So if, if, it is put, as, if it is put, what, as, what is the policy in relation? Said, Absolutely. And, and the alternative position could also be put that uh, uh, what is the position in relation to contractors? Absolutely. So, Dr. Spencer, 
Having, having gone down that road, we have ended up right where we started. Uh, and and now I'm, I'm a little confused as to what the question is, because I've heard so <laughs> the, many the, versions. The question, it. quite frankly, is that within the agency, if someone declares themselves as a candidate in a, a, a constituency, how is okay. it dealt with? Yes, um, thanks for the question, Chairman. The, the TPD co prides itself on hiring the best and the most qualified. And so at, at the point, at that, from that perspective, we are never aware, certainly not consciously, of whatever association someone has. And that's, uh, so that's the first thing. The, the second thing is that we are guided, certainly, by the laws of Jamaica. And for us, even though the staff orders guide us in our actions, there's a constitutional right that that exceeds the staff orders, which is our constitutional right to association. Once we can prove that, that, that nothing exceeds that right, that constitutional right to association, we are so guided and we don't make determinations about employment based on those. Man. So, just, just, just as a matter, Dr. Spencer, So, permanent secretary, permanent secretary, I, as the person who yes, governs, Chairman. as the person who governs the ministry and its agencies, um, in your guidance of their proceedings and the contracts that the members, members, members. Member Clark, Member Clark, why are you suggesting that it's a female? Member, um, sorry, Permanent Sector, let me just get back. As I'm the, sorry, Mr. As Chairman. the accounting officer who oversees um, both all the agencies and the ministry and guides them in their procedures. Just as a matter of course, you are aware of course of the, the staff orders for public service. Yes, Chairman. And in section 426 of the staff orders, you do recognize that it speaks to political activity and the staff orders for public service, they indicate in section one of that line item, it says, officers are expressly forbidden to engage in any type of partisan political activity in any elections at any level. You are aware of that? I'm fully aware of that, Chairman, but I also don't know of any member of staff involved in active political things. And if you did? Ago. If I did, I would, have, I would refer to staff order, but there's nobody in the ministry. I refer to I staff know. order and... And, and um, advise accordingly. And that it's advice for, would be? That advice would be in accordance with section 4.26 of the staff order. You just read, you just read the section. So I don't, I don't that have... That is expressly forbidden. Is, yeah. Right. But I do not have anyone in the ministry that has so expressed an intent. So... And, 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 Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, at a point of order, on a point of order, protocol dictates that unless, not because the pastor of the church said that I am a Christian, means that I am a Christian. So not because I don't, I, listen to me, unless the person, unless the person, unless the person or persons no, could you clarify indicate that? by themselves, I, no, I never say anything, I don't know what you're speaking about. I am speaking about what the chairman brought to the, to the, clarity, to the committee. For clarity, unless who is the pastor of the church? No, there's, no, there's no clarity to that. I speak clearly. A pastor, you know who is a pastor? Mr. Chairman, unless... The person or persons indicate by way of a writing docu written document that, and if they say it by, by way of, of verbal conversation, it means that only and then that we can accept it. I, I but you cannot come here to say that 
I am saying, or somebody else is saying, that that person is going to be. No, no. we have seen, we have seen, and if you check the printed media, Mr. Chairman, if you check Mr. the printed media, Clark, we I, could I go to a point where we saw somebody in the media, we saw somebody in the media, and it was denounced by the opposition that that person is not so. So I don't understand where we're going with this argument. The, the member we have, should... We have clarified. We member Mr. Clark, yes. Member Clark, I, I will protect you from yourself. And, 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 and I will let us leave it there more anon. I think we have gotten the point that we were seeking to clarify. And I'm sure that all things will flow from that. Mr. Chair, just one right. little fine point I'd like the peers to clarify. In reference to the staff order that you, you read, she said she will act in accordance with the staff order. And that action is to do what? If it is established that the person is in breach. Let me just read a staff order section for you. And there are three points. The section 4.26. 4. 4. And says political activity. The officers are expressly forbidden to engage in any type of partisan political activity in any elections at any level. Elections. 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 Two. I beg your pardon, Two. Member Taylor. <laughs> she, I, I'm sorry. The, the, strict, the strict letter of what she has said is election Two. mode. There is no election pending, none at all. So great. We've, we, we, we've, passed, we've passed that hurdle. It's not February 2021. Been, Continue, Madam Permanent Secretary. Member Clark, I'm trying to protect you from yourself, but you are not taking protection. Continue, continue, right. yes. I attempt to... You will convict your own self. <laughs> Item 2 says, in the exercise of official duties, no service or benefit should be denied or provided to anyone on the basis of partisan political affiliation. And the third point says, in the exercise of official duties, I'm sorry, it's not my phone, it's not my phone and thing. The thing died in the process. Take the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not Remember my phone. Remember class. So I, my. So I, I do have the code when it um, goes silent. The third point says, in the exercise of official duties, officers may be required to provide factual information to explain or clarify government policy. So we have no factual information on the matter raised, Chairman. So we have no basis to take no. any kind of action. No. Neither, neither is there an election. Neither is there an election, Mr. Chairman. Neither is there an pending election. And once a county here and any election More is not considered due until February 2021. <laughs> so this really is a non-issue and I don't believe the committee ought to occupy itself any further on this matter. Thank you. Is that the pastor of the church? <laughs> All right, please. All right, members. Thank you very much, Pierce. I think the first point you read, you, read, you, read, you read was very clear. Very Thank clear. you. Thank you, Pierce. All right. Um, member, um, Dr. Spencer, last question that I would, would ask. The, the last question I would ask, in terms of your, your, you had said that your element of the project is the debushing. The, the, sorry, I'm back into the projects that you are executing. They're, they're the 355 million. You have only done 70, so you're doing a project for it now. What, when we get to TP, TF, I think we can both look at it. I, I'm, I'm sort of get, trying to get an idea of how the expenditure on the projects is spread out amongst 
the different resort areas. But just a question, the, the signs. You, you have done some signs in Greenwood, some signs in, I think, the Hanover. You, you have an idea of what, I mean, I don't know if it's offhand, but you have an idea of what the cost of the signs are? Sir, Chairman, I don't know. Are you referring to signage or we have a parish marker program which is separate from a signage program? So. Well, either. Or either. Okay. I'm, I'm not certain. I'm just trying to. All right. The, the signage program that we have for this year is, is $20 million. $20 million for signage. That's the, the project. But you, and what's the average cost of your signs? Well, all right. So that's signage. No, definitely not. Um, in fact, interestingly, nine million is what we spent on that. But the the well, we, parish we, marker program, Chairman, on average, because the twenty million dollar project that I'm talking about is one through NWA for all island signage. I suspect that is not what you're referring to. So the parish marker program, typically one of those is roughly four million dollars. Four million dollars. Yeah. Four million or so. Do you have a template or one of those that comes? We do. It's a parish Canada's mark. I'd sure. love to see it. Yes, absolutely. Because I have I have some very outstanding signs in Portmore that cost yes. under two million dollars yes. that the whole place is excited about. When, when you see our parish markers, you will you will agree. Okay, I'd li like to see what yes. that four million dollars costs. You're no, no, he says he already has. Please, no. Just, just, please, you have seen them. That's what I was asking about. No, I'm, I'm just saying to you. Yes, we have seven such signs. In, in our parish. <laughs> All right, please. What, what, no, what, one second. Yes, it's a <laughs> yes. Um, Dr. Spencer, just as a just as a matter of interest, you just raised an important point. You said the Mobe sign. Um, just as a interest, you you had gotten some persons who had paid, had given um, donations. How many donations did you get for it? We got seven donations to the tune of $5 million. Seven donations for the $5 million. And you're saying that the sign, the Montego Bay sign at the end of the day costs? Saying at the end of the day, we spent roughly $14 million on it and $9 million from taxpayers. Right. Purse. Give $14 million, $5 million from the private sector donation, and $9 million from the TPD budget, or right. TEF budget rather. The, the, I notice in this budget, you, uh, you have $10 million for the landscaping of the park. The roundabout. That's the same roundabout? That's the roundabout that's across the street, yes. Oh, you're part of the planning committee? <laughs> Oh, you have started that work? The ma yes, there's ma it's a major gateway for the, for the area. No, no, so we that have wasn't the point yes. I'm making. No, because I was looking in the budget. I didn't see where the landscaping had started. You indicated you were having some difficulties. Yes, we've started that work. We've started that work. Okay, and your budget is? Nine million. Nine million yes. dollars. So, but then there's also in here you indicate that you're going to do some work on the land adjacent to it. But which item are you referring to exactly? All right, that is on, that's, it's, it's, it's the pro, in the question that was asked mm -hmm. on page 25, I think it is, no. It was, the question asked what were the projects for this year mm -hmm. 
that indicated that the land on the west of the Western site. Beautification Project, correct. Right, that's so adjacent land. We have, some, we have some challenge with that particular project because of some issues to do with um, tenure and, and some matters with the municipal corporation before we are able to execute those beautification works. But that's another 25. What, what page are you on, Jim? Page 28, item 3. Right, okay. Yes, yeah, so the Western Beautification Project that you have identified, Chairman, if you see it's a list of projects, 1819 to 1920. Um, this is 1819. This is a project that we were not able to execute as a result of those challenges that we mentioned. Right. Okay, so this project, are you going to do it? We don't have it on, on, on our list at this point. No, um, no, please, it says the Ministry of Tourism's report. It says, please list approved projects 2018, 19 to 1920. That's this year. Yes, but this, this list right here is 18, 19. If you look at the top of the table, it says approved projects okay. 18, 19. So, the, so these, these are not projects? Not this year, because of okay. the f fiscal year. Okay. All right. Okay. Huh? No, because I'm, I'm. Yes. Go ahead. All right. Mr. Chairman, I was just saying so, that the only thing that needs to be added to that era, in in front of Sanctus, is really the Jamaican flag, and you can create it out of the same creation of the lights. I think we have a. a yes, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. So you, you don't have to quarrel with me when we come back. However, I think there's a I think there was a sign like in the airport, but I do believe that one out on the main would be a useful addition. Just in keeping with, with what is there, that it is created out of the same perspex and lighting, so it can change from the Jamaican flag into our, our you call it the bandana, floral looking thing. So it changes just as though the other lights change from time to time. So it would be the depiction of the flag on our and national. The These things tend to be very costly. When, <laughs> when you go down that line, I would be careful. All right, um, members, I think at this time, because there is some overlap, I'm going to invite um, TF to sort of give us the overview and then we can deal with the joint projects and, and, and finalize. Okay, so Dr. Wallace, welcome. And um, Thank you, I, thank you Chairman and members. Well, uh, at the TEF we are proud to be part of the Ministry of Tourism that's leading uh, record growth in Jamaica's tourism arrivals and performance overall. For the last 14 quarters, where we've seen growth in, in the GDP of Jamaica, tourism has featured in those 14 quarters. The last three quarters, tourism has led that growth of all the other industries. Um, in fact, the trajectory for tourism is hold that on, it will hold double. On. One second, Dr. Yes. Wells, I'm not quite certain. When you say that tourism has led Meaning the growth. Meaning of every quarter, there are different industries that contribute to the growth. There are some industries that have negative, there are some neutral, there are some positive. Mining, agriculture, and so on. So for the last 14 quarters, tourism has always been tourism a contributor services. to the Every growth of, of, the GDP, of GDP. For the last three, we have been a top. We've been a leader for the growth of, um, in the last three quarters. Um, the trajectory is that we will double our room stock in the next 10 years. And I say that because what it, the, the doubling of the room stock, the majority will be large, all-inclusive luxury properties that are coming in. And what it means is that as a destination, as a nation, we have to be prepared for 
our people to participate in that growth as it comes in, because the majority of that growth will be foreign direct investments coming in. As such, we have, the TEF has been re repositioned to focus on preparing Jamaica to meet that, um, that flood of inflows that we anticipate, what we've been having and continue to, to, to anticipate in the next uh, 10 years. So our investments have been in building out our supply sector, so our linkages program, and then ensuring that our local manufacturers and producers are equipped to be at that standard where these large hotels who are accustomed to first world standards of supplies and service, that we, our local suppliers, are at that level. And so we've invested a lot in our agricultural linkages program or manufacturing linkages program. And the other networks, sports and entertainment, gastronomy, uh, health and wellness, um, knowledge, and shopping. So our $3.57 billion budget that we received, um, quite a lot was invested in those areas of, of the linkages the actual JCTI program, which is training and certifying our people to get the top jobs in these hotels when they do. know as they are and when, when the others come in as well. We also invest a lot in, in creating the, the infrastructure around the resort towns to make sure that they can handle that capacity. And a lot of it is related to the human capital as well. So it's quarter regularization and so on is to ensure that the, the workers of, of the industry are living in decent situations and decent circumstances as they supply um, services to these, these luxury all-inclusives across the, 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 the road from them. And so a lot of our investments are in, in those key areas to ensure that when the future hits us with the doubling of our industry as we know it, um, that that wealth is passed to the people of Jamaica. I have submitted the question that you've asked, and um, so uh, I hear Before it. you go there, just, I'm, I'm, I don't know, maybe PS can help. I, I'm just not, I'm just trying to remember, over the last two years, we've had a number of properties that have broken ground. Which ones, which ones in the last two years have we had? What's it? Just, just well, the H10 and Trillon is the one that's all, in fact, yeah, they're, right, H10. They're, right, they're expecting to complete uh, um, by is, the end of this what year. Is, which other projects? We have uh, Excellence that Marriott. just completed in Trillon. We have the AC Marriott in Kingston. We no, have the, the, the Princess. The Excellence was there, yeah. Princess in uh, Green Island is, no, I'm they're clearing the land. Have, in the last two years, just what has broken ground or whatever? Exactly. I, I said and AC Marriott and H10. And Excellence. Excellence was last year as well. Excellence started Excellence from back. And Rio Ocherius expanded. 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 On the board. I'm just. I refer to Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking for, the for R, information. The hotel in Kingston. Yeah, so it's a number of them. I have a list somewhere in document. And yeah, and just for the, just for memory's sake, I just yeah. wanted to, yeah. maybe, maybe you can just check and see if we have I forgotten can, anything. I will find, find the yeah. rest in document. But, but that, yeah, that's kind of my memory. But you have too. a number of them so far. All right. Um, yeah. Thank, thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Uh, as, as, as we all understand and we are well aware of climate change and the effect that it has on tourism. To localize the situation, Mr. Chairman, we, St. James, we have four gullies that empties into the sea and you understand the bay is, when you look at the bay, it is really narrow in, in certain geographical yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, there are two, three main gullies that affects tourism each time. 
we have a change of, uh, of, of change of the weather where we have heavy rains. And that is the South Gully, the North Gully, and the Gully at Iron Shore Coral Gardens. You would remember that sometime last year when we had that over exhaust time of, of, of the showers, the devastation that took place at Rio. Mm -hmm. I am asking through this, but not so much out there. Rio is one, and then the two that is downtown Montego Bay, Pier 1, on both sides of Pier 1. How can TEF assist in the training of these gullies that will see what happened not so long ago, not happening in that devastative situation again. Mm -hmm. Rio had to move the entire population, guest population, out and did a uh, entire cleaning of the air. And the garbage that comes down from the hills, I mean, we also have to pay or play a role where education sensitization is concerned with the residents that live up the hill. But I think here is with the advent of climate change that we need to pay more attention to these things because, yes, it is tourism, and you, you're correct, the last three quarters, tourism has been the number one. We hope to continue and to maintain that, but in maintaining it, we also have to look at other components that have, because whenever it rains in that magnitude, our beaches are not able to be used for days, because you have now to have the cleanup team to go in and to remove. It is something that, Mr. Chairman, that we could ask TF to pay some attention to, because yes, the funding that comes to TF comes from the tourism, or the tourists coming in. And yes, they're coming, not only for one, but all three S's. So that's one, Mr. Chairman. The ne <laughs> I never said four, I said three. <laughs> The next one, Mr. Chairman, is the water distribution. Again, it is one of the most important components in our tourism product, the supply and the distribution of water. And we do have a, a situation. Once again, Mr. Chairman, I know that the NWC is the agency that is tasked with providing and distribution of water. But the mere fact that TEF derives out of the tourism product, and there is some amount of funding. If they could partner to develop a better or a second water system that goes directly or supplies the tourism sector itself, because Mr. Chairman, you understand more than anybody else, the volume of water, Mr. Chairman, that just the sector, the Negril sector use on a daily basis. And I've heard the cries from many of the small hoteliers that speak to the purchasing of water. They'll purchase half a million dollar worth of water for the, the week and is like a drop in the bucket. Because most of it goes to transportation rather than the water that is so needed. But yet, Mr. Chairman, we have Mr. Chairman, you're not paying attention. <laughs> We have the, the Roaring River water, water supply there, which is not being used or harvested to its it, it, it maximum. We also have the Negril River that is close to Negril that we also can put in a system. Is this something, Mr. Chairman, that we could recommend that some attention be paid to and move from there? Yes, 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 Chairman and, and Member. Um, remember, tourism really facilitates visitors coming and getting the experience here in Jamaica. 
The experience here in Jamaica is, is comprised and supported by many industries, many ministries, including, um, I mean, end of the sea really has a portfolio of supplying water and so on. The TEF looks at our policies as far as ensuring that as a destination, we are being enhanced, we're enhancing that destination, we're developing that destination in a way that it continues to foster that growth in tourism. So as much as we see the projects, there are, there are a multitude of things that need fixing across Jamaica. But as much as it is a direct project that is that fills that gap between what is needed to get tourism to grow, to continue to grow, to continue to be of a, of a high standard or to be of a better standard, those are the projects that we we then get involved with. And, it's, and, and, and just to correct something that you said, it, no, we collect from the airline and cruise passengers that come in, but we then hand it over to the consul fund. We then submit each year a budget of those project, projects that we intend to do for the next financial year in order to, um, to execute those as far as it matches the policies and programs that we have. So that project, you described it impacting tourism, and yes, it will come on our radar, and we will pay attention to it. But in general, we have programs in our budget that we look at, at developing the, the, the resort towns and so on to ensure that from a tourism perspective, it makes Jam Destination Jamaica a better one. Thank you. And I, I think that the, the, on the other side of it, uh, uh, where they have these issues, environmental, you have lead agencies, whether it is, uh, again, NWA, Parish Council, right, that, the, where they can help, but I think somebody has to bring it usually to them. Um, just just, just a question. You have here number three, page 78. You speak of the roads to attractions, enhancement of major roadways. Yes, Chairman. 420 million. Your, your uh, way down the project. The, the question, um, you said 13 roads have been completed. What, what's the criteria for your roads? As the arrivals grow, what we need to have is more and more attractions to be able to get Absolutely. Um, that tourism spend to come into the, and the, for the tourist experience to be even more enhanced as well. So as attractions are rolling out to match the arrivals that are coming in, you find a lot of them are in relatively remote areas that would not have had the infrastructure developed in such a way to accommodate large coaches and so on to, to go there. We then, as, uh, as the Tourism Management Fund, would allocate a budget to respond to those direct needs. I mean, if a cruise ship is pulling in um, for a season, bringing in thousands of passengers each week, and there is a tour in a remote part, um, the Good Hope Project, for instance, in, in Trelawne is, is one such one that road infrastructure is just not solid enough, we would step in and partner so, with the so NWA to get that road um, rehabilitated. Th this program has been there for some time, back That's from correct. our That's administration. Correct. I ask you because it's, it's very clear in its mandate. And I think how it's written here is, is very clear. You speak to roads to attractions. Right. So where you have had attractions, especially major attractions, you, you, you select and do those roads and major roadways because a lot of times where your tours are going even normal main roads are not where you want them and you in your interest you will fund that that's correct so i, I, I ask that question because that that's that project now you have 13 roads do you have a list of those 13 roads i can furnish you with a list but i could list out a few um the Dead End Beach Road um, in Montego Bay, um, the Good Hope Road that I mentioned earlier, the uh, some roads in Central Elizabeth, the Lover's Leap Road, mm -hmm. uh, Billy's Bay to Parati Beach. Yeah, definitely needed. Uh, 
fall right, it, well, fall it along me. Yeah, I could, yeah, I could so, su supply okay. that list to you. And and all of those, I'm, I'm, I'm fully. That's I think within the mandate of it. That's correct. What what I was what jumped out at me in your report is that at number five. Which is which one? On page seventy nine. You have Somerton Road Rehabilitation. Now, this has not fallen either under the attraction. It has not fallen under any of those projects. It was an, a line item approved by the TF board. Um, you have information? Right. On the that? Somerton Road, from my understanding, is the road to Jimmy Cliff's house and um, Little Lenny White. There were three prominent uh, Jamaicans. I remember going to that um, groundbreaking. No, I th well, I, just to know, I, I actually, and I, I traveled far and wide. I was up in that area. My, my understanding is that the section of road that was fixed was from Bullock Bay to, to Somerton Square. But I'm just making the point that how do you, I, I don't, you have not been up there. I suggest I you should. I was there for the groundbreaking, yes, of that road roadworks. Oh, you were there for the groundbreaking of that road. Right. I'm just saying, I, I can't figure out what is the tourism. In other words, A, it's not under the tourism, under the, the roads road program you have. This is now separately something that the board itself, in its wisdom, determined as a separate project and secondly there's no attraction up there right well my recollection is and, and you're correct the board assesses based on the impact it will have on tourism or or the facilitation of tourism once in a while if it, it may be a case where it's a road that facilitates um transportation from a, a popular um a popular area where tourism workers live and it's, it's something that helps to facilitate tourism. So how would itself. that have been brought? By an application from the uh, the works agency or if more than the, the more so agency. than others no, now, what we do know is that we determine um, where are the areas of critical need as far as tourism development is concerned and we then partner with the implementation agencies like the NWA or, or the UDC and so on. Parish the West the municipal corporations as well. Yes, but uh, but I ask the question because this is not your normal tourism road, um, and you have a very specific mandate. So you know, I'm just wondering if you are venturing outside of your mandate. You know, so Mr. Chairman, let us let us take for, and let, as a man, although not take, originally from St. James, I don't know if you have been up there let, recently. Where? To the, the where the road was fixed in Summerton. Yeah, man, because it it, it goes up to to. It no, okay, you know, I've been protecting you all day. N Mr. Chairman, <laughs> let me ask a question, Mr. Chairman. Mayfields Falls in Hanover. That's a tourist attraction. Yes. The road from Flint River up to the first community. Flint is, River. Yeah, Flint River down by Trial. Okay. No. Yes. Remember, you know, Mayfield Falls is how many miles away from there? Far. Right. Some Would you distance. say that that road can be addressed under the same heading where road is concerned as it relates to tourism product? Well, I would say this. Where would you be going to on this road in summertime? Sorry? Where would you be going to? Croydon, they have, they have a tourist attraction. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Where? It is operated by a returning resident couple up at the back of Kemshot. But the road... No, no, Kemshot. Summerton and Kemshot. No, no. You, you drive one way so, and you can drive one way so. But the, the road leading through gutters up to Kemshot is very treacherous because it is on the hillside and it is breaking away severely. But the funding is going to be heavy. So I suspect that's why they, they choose to develop the, 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 the lower road, which would the road, which would be the road going summertime up I'm, to... I'm, I'm, I make this for a, 
I make this uh, assessment. And it's my opinion. I make this assessment for a, a specific reason. I use the situation of the Mayfield Road because again we could go bamboo. No, we could I, go I bamboo think, cold spring. No. And me, 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 me let, let me say let me say two things to you. A you have a program that deals with roads to attractions and otherwise, which is dealt with through the, the organization of TF. Funding of funding of couple hundred um, four hundred and twenty million has been laid aside for that. And I suspect that the agency as just the names of those roads that were given out quite readily we are able because those roads actually are on a list of roads to attractions which you're, you're trying to work through over a period of time. I'm He'd saying say that in he this the case, rest. please, in this case, a specific road which has no real immediate relevance to tourism was singled out and selected to be done. I'm saying to you again, it's a very untidy way to do business in an agency. So I, I, I only put it there and we can leave it at that. Sorry, but Mr. Chairman, is that the position of, because I, do, I don't believe that's the position of the agency. So if that's not the position you, of the agency, so then like it would clarity. be. No, but if that's not the position of the agency, then it would be improper for, for anyone in this committee to make that assertion. Because no. certainly in, 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 in developing the, 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 the product that is also linked back to community tourism. Remember, our attractions aren't just for foreigners. The attractions are here for their our cultural heritage. They're here for our people. And therefore, our people must have ease of access to go to and from the attractions. And so if in developing the attraction and in facilitating ease of access to the attraction by members of the community, our Jamaican brothers and sisters, and a road is being developed or repaired to facilitate ease of, then, 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 then clearly that is within the scope of the project. Getting the people of Jamaica to enjoy our cultural heritage. So again, I, I, again, Mr. Chairman, non-issue, and we should be careful how I we try again, to, you know, the smoke I and again. mirrors in terms of how the government is doing it. Do you know, Mr. Chairman, that under this administration, the work that they are doing, we have seen over 4 million visitors to Jamaica. That, that is, that, that, that's the highest in our history. We are on our way to having 5 million tourists visiting Jamaica. Absolutely. So clearly the agency and, and the principal ministry, they are doing, they have the technical skills, they have the knowledge, they have the know-how to get the work done, to get the visitors to Jamaica, which is going to increase our GDP, it's going to increase our net foreign reserves, and that's exactly what is happening. So I would say thank you to the agents that is present here for ensuring the prosperity of Jamaica. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that is cheerleading role well, for the morning. Well, well um, I, I, I know we're, we're, we're coming to the end. The, the, there is here in your budget, it, we notice that there's a billion dollars roughly for national projects, a billion dollars for Montego Bay. Um, but then the rest of the uh, the rest of the resort areas are getting about 10% of that, maybe a little more. Uh, is there any specific reason why there's sort of a this this large disparity and why the others? Because quite frankly, a number of projects that were slated for other areas have either been suspended, discontinued, whereas projects have gone apace in others. And I, I make one I make one suggestion in terms of the beaches program. All the plans, the contracts, everything were done for the Negril, the Norman Manley Beach Park. It had actually gone out to tender months before at late twenty fifteen. Subsequent to that, work has started over the last three years on Salem, and you're now looking at Close Harbor. Is there some reason why 
in in this spending a billion dollars in Montego Bay and 120,000 or whatever it is in Negril. Why is it that these projects are not moving Okay. On? All right. So there are a couple of, of reasons. The first one why Montego Bay appears to get a disproportionate amount of the budget is because um, one is the tourism capital of Jamaica. So it's from, a, from a magnitude standpoint, it is the largest. Um, secondly, the infrastructural development program, in particular the squatter um, redevelopment programs that we've had over many, many years. Um, in fact, several decades ago, we purchased the, the lands in Lilliput and Flankers and, and Grange Pen and so on, and there were programs afoot to... Div to How much is being spent in Montego Bay under the squatter? Removal program. The Squatter project is a billion over several years, so this year is only 400 million that is, um, is this, earmarked. Is for there that. a project being done in any other resort area of Squatter? Well, these kind of projects are, t take a while to go through procurement and so on, and I'm, I can, you'll be happy to know that Negril is, is the next one in the pipeline that will be executed in next financial year. But you do know that that project, again, a, a lot of work had been done and it, it was not taken to completion. Well, it, but rest assured, with, it will be in issues. the next financial year. This year, the, the works on the ground based on the procurement and what's in the pipeline with, with, in partnership with HAJ is for the, the Grange Pen project, which happens to be in, um, in Montego, in St. James as well. So hence, it's, it, that's, a, that's 400 million. So that, that skews the Montego Bay uh, numbers significantly. What are the other issues that make up the billion? So we have uh, uh, Summerton Road, as you mentioned earlier. We have the Success Beach that we're developing as well. And then the rest are a multitude of smaller projects. That, um, but just to sh you mentioned the, 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 Long, the Long Bay Beach Park um, project that in, in the grill was in the pipeline and so on. Norman Manley. Norman Manley Beach Park, I apologize. One of the challenges, or one of the, one of the reasons why Montego Bay's projects um, seem to get executed more quickly is because of the collaboration in that in that resort town, compared to a lot of other resort towns where their stakeholders are uh, are undecided or, or opposed to some of the projects, even after we've been way down the pipeline. And and as because we try and partner with our stakeholders in all the resort towns, it when there is a agreement which Montego Bay seems to have quite a lot of, you know, and so I, and I saying, hope, I, I hope this message that, gets to the other resorts so, so that they collaborate that, more. So you're saying, as we we're talking about Negril, that one of the reasons why it hasn't gone further is because of difficulties in getting stakeholders to agree to, to agree on, on what needs to be done. Down That's there. correct. Okay. All right. Uh, the beaches program. Anything? It, that is still in procurement for the designs. Um, a few projects are, had designs already and are being uh, the, the, in, in procurement for the works. But for the most part, a lot of the, what, what, since we became, uh, uh, um, we moved from having our own uh, collections staying in the TEF to now having to send it through the, to, to the console fund. And now we are on a, um, a subvention, and therefore we are on a cash basis of of, of, of execution of the of the of, the, of our budget versus an accrual basis. We now have to, we've adjusted so that we do more of the design work. We don't approve projects for the entire budget. We approve the amount for the designs to get that out of the way. The same thing I just mentioned about stakeholder um, agreements. If we get all that done early on in the project without tying up the, the full cost of the project, then we then afterwards contract for the works. So we are doing them separately in order to be more efficient in the way that we spend our budget. All right. Members? No, certainly we, we, we just, I'm, I'm wrapping up, so anything you need to. No, just, yeah. Can I? 
Yes. Yes. Um, essentially, I wanted to find out, as I indicated the last time we were here, Chairman, the role of the Montego Bay Conference Center was to generate the occurrences of conferences which will boost both the tourist, the hotel occupancies and all other that comes from the increased volume. That was the design concept intent, as all conference centers, I think, do globally. We have had our problems. I want to go over them with the conference center, with the management, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Where are we in terms of fulfilling that mandate? The last time you were here, not you personally, but the conference center, the revenues being generated, Chairman, was primarily from local events and not from overseas um, activities. If you could give us a sense of where we are. I look at through the, the, the financial reporting in the report, but it doesn't give me that disaggregation. I particularly want to know, are we fulfilling what we set out to achieve with the conference center? We have invested in an overseas management company. And again, the last time we looked at it, Chairman, I think it was a consensus across the board that the expertise we brought in and the benefit we expected, which is to be part of their international conference location marketing, we never saw that coming to Jamaica. I want to get a sense of where we are along that projection. All right. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Member. Um, Karen Benjamin from the Montego Bay Convention Center. <clears throat> so looking at the growth since, um, and we could go back to, from 2016 to, um, to present date, um, October 31st, or not present date, the, um, the last day that we had run the report, October 31st, um, 2019, you had asked the growth of um, events, both uh, especially for the international, from the international side. 2016 showed that we're coming from 110 events, um, 2017, 125, 2018, 161, and um, to date, October 31st, 104 events so far. Of those, uh, we've seen an increase in the number of international events that are coming to Jamaica. In 2016, we had a total of 19. Um, that increased to 23 in 2017 and um, 25 in 2018. And so far, we have, um, as of October 31st, we had um, 12 international events coming to Jamaica. The mandate of the convention center is, of course, to establish Jamaica as a premier meeting and events destination in the Caribbean. And um, through organizations such as the World Travel Awards, the Convention Center has been um, nominated and won over nine consecutive years the leading meetings and conference um, desti um, facility in the Caribbean itself, up against three other, destina other destinations in the English-speaking Caribbean and also Puerto Rico, which um, of course is managed by the parent management company. The convention centers are catalysts, of course, and um, they are measured through mainly economic impact, whether it be direct, indirect, or induced. And for the hotel industry, immediately in the environs of the convention center, um, we have seen and we have contributed significantly to their occupancies or their room nights. One of the challenges that the convention center do have and um, of course, this is worldwide, is a point with which, when we do have large meetings and conferences, planners, especially from the international market, they do require EP hotels. EP hotels. Um, the challenge for the convention center is that we're surrounded by all inclusives. So that's, that's the first challenge. And um, we, have, we have tried our best to partner with the hotels in Montego Bay, especially on the Elegant Corridor, to see the best rates that we could get when we're quoting packages or negotiating, especially with international clients. So the challenge is still there because the feel is 
once we book an all-inclusive package, it comes with everything, we spend the entire day at the convention center, which again, we're consuming resources such as food and beverage. So it, it is felt as if it's a double cost. So that's where, uh, that's where one of the main challenge is right now. But for the mandate, we can strongly say with the growth of the events that we've seen over the years, with the growth of the international events that we've seen over the years, um, we can say the convention center is seeing an improvement. It has improved significantly, and of course, um, contributing to the economic impact in and around the immediate environs. So Benjamin, I am usually afraid of these terms a lot, much. Yes. They're very vague. They are feel-good terms. They don't give you any quantitative nor even qualitative measurement of where you are. You mentioned about, you're just so describing, talking about the contribution that it makes. Could you, that's one. Next point is, you give the number of events. Quite frankly, it might be good in comparison over time, but it doesn't give you any idea of impact. For example, if it's 100 small events, it's a different thing than if it is 50 huge ones. So those numbers are relative and really don't give you, tell you much. I would like for you to give us some quantitative assessment, because at the end of the day, it's about dollars and cents. It's about how it is impacting on the economy of the area where it is in Montego Bay and by extension, Jamaica at large. Third point. Third point, I appreciate the challenge you mentioned about the, the need for EP hotels as against all-inclusive. Um, very, very, very valid point. But our reality is our reality. We have predominantly all-inclusive hotels in that corridor. You can go back, well, all around. I've, I'm just going to throw out a suggestion. Um, I'm not a tourist hotel expert, so. But I would believe that the all-inclusive in structuring their, their rates, they assume the level of consumption that each guest would make in their hotel, both in terms of drink and food, etc. cetera. Um, I just suggest you guys consider coming up with some permutations, some thing that could induce the all-inclusive for some special packages in terms of rate costs for persons who are for convention purposes. Because I said, you don't really have no control over the fact that it is predominantly all-inclusive. That's the reality. But you have a conference center that you want to boost yes. occupy, um, usage of, which is to drive the tourist traffic. So those are the you know, further observations I make from the comments you gave. Um, thank you, Chairman. Just in, in regard to your projection for the center per, call it financial year, could you give me a little idea of what you have projected that would be something meaningful that you would say, yes, the center is now being maximized? All right. <clears throat> Let me just start by first um, addressing the points that you had um, that you had made for the in, for the local events that we do have it's it's um it's it's a key fact that 30 to 40 percent of the attendees for the local events um, they're from a, um, from a regional or international background 30 to 40 percent attendees are from regional, regional meaning within CARICOM are international. Yes, yes, 30 to 40%. And of course, of the total events that we do have, 18% is actually um, international. 18, one eight is actually international. In terms of the percentage, we, um, we look at the the value in the revenue that is generated from the international event because when we value a local event versus an international event 
the international event is, although the, occup the percentage is low, the international event is where we assume the largest percentage of revenue and also profit from that revenue. If we're looking at the projections, um, let's just look at, for instance, uh, um, present 20, um, financial year 2020. Um, looking back at 1819, um, our net income was uh, 114 million. To date, for to date, as a, when I say to date, I mean October 31st. <laughs> in time, in time. <laughs> um, October to October 31st, our our net income actually um, was 29 million, and of course we have not looked at November as yet because this report stopped at um, 20. Um, sorry, October 31st. So when we look at the trend in terms of revenue, um, we're seeing a positive move. And we combine that trend with the number of events that we do have. And also, we're supporting that trend with the marketing initiatives that we do have for this present fiscal and the fiscal that is coming for 2020-2021. Um, for so the projections we're looking at the different from 18 to 19 and to the present 20 and to um 20 and also to financial year 2020 to 2021 we've crafted the budget to look at a three to five percent growth in revenue let, 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 let me just just to get some clarity yes you are the new I'm the interim general manager. Interim general yes. manager. Okay. All right. Uh, no, we had a contract with SMG. No, ASM Global. They have merged with another large entertainment company in the U.S. No, that contract. We we had a contract which was a, I think a ten-year contract which would have expired about two years ago. Um, it it comes to an end July of next year. Oh. Yes. All right. So, so the contract started in 2009. Then. It was an extension. Extension. Oh, you got an extension. Yes. So the, the question is. That. The contract allowed for a two-year mm -hmm. extension, Chairman. Why? Why? Was it something that we? Because we were just going. It was no. It was always in the contract. But at the time, we were just um, going through changes with TEF. We're trying to purchase the shares. We're doing a number of things. We're changing over, and so um, we found it prudent to let me continue until it, until they are. Um, right. Who is expire. who is in charge of funding the marketing of the convention center now? That comes from the present consolidated funds. All right. So mm -hmm. in 2015, when we did an analysis we found that one of the problems was that under the, that then management, marketing was insufficient. And in 2015, a committee was set up. I understand that the majority of the committee has continued. Uh, and funding was put in place for marketing. And, and I think projections made for growth from then on. And listening to you, that growth has continued. But how much is allocated to marketing per year now? Per year now, it is that's eighty million. Eighty million. Eight zero. Eighty million dollars for marketing in the convention center. That that is up from. In 2015, I think we were at about 25. 25. Yes. Yes. Am I correct? <coughs> yes. About. So, so the the amount of support for marketing has increased exponentially. In terms of the subvention, it was determined TF, but now TF went into consult fund, so that comes directly to you now. Yes. So, what is the subvention of government to you? Per year, two two thirty for this financial year. That two hundred thirty million is 
uh, includes the 80? Yes, it does. it does. So your total subvention is 230. And last year? Last year? Last year it was TEF. TEF. The contribution was 300 and 4 million? 205 million. Mm -hmm. Last year, was the last year TEF gave a direct um, support. Mm -hmm. and, and this year it came to a consult fund, and the amount was 200 and, and, and 31, 30. 31 million. And okay. it's given as a grant, and they then said, where they need to or they need to spend it. So they are portion. So it's a grant. Now yes. is this grant given to how I'm just trying to understand now. Mm -hmm. This grant is given to SMG or how is that working out? Because part of the difficulty that I've had is that SMG we had built the convention center, turned it over to a company to manage and market. The, the contract was a bit nebulous, and what was happening to us is that the, it was not earning enough, and the government had to come in and, and assist, which is the subvention that's been given. Now, the question that I'm asking is that, is this just given in a general sense to the marketing company as part of their management and No, how, how, that, how that is allocated when we're, oh, sorry. MBCC is a uh, is um, owned by the government of Jamaica. Yes. It is in fact a subject now on the Ministry of Tourism. Right. Previous it was on a UDC. Exactly. And so therefore it has always government owned. Absolutely. Um, SMG is a, is a management company em employed to manage the state affairs. So there's a board of directors named by government of Jamaica, and um, they have responsibility as in any other public entity board does. And so the fund goes to the entity itself. So, so you would work for the government of Jamaica, SMG? Work for SMG. Because yeah. SMG does the day-to-day -day management. But um, what we ask for budgets and reports and we submit to finance so and as you, any other entity. Well, given, given that, so, the, so we are really paying them 240 million to manage it. That's a contribution oh. towards operations because they do not generate sufficient revenue to cover their expenses. So it's a support to their operations that we provide. Do they do marketing? Um, they do some marketing, and JTB also includes the mass marketing you know, in what they do. So back to my original question, which was where I thought we were going two years ago, that if we are, the only thing that they're really doing is managing, I'm certain that we are able to manage it ourselves. And as we, as I explained earlier on, Chairman, we're in the last six to eight months of the contract, and uh, we're required to give a six month notice period that we're going to retender or whatever we decide to do at the end of um, June 20. 2020. Well, we, we, so, I think this committee so, would be very interested so that's, um, because, so quite that's frankly, I would need some very strong justification to, to understand why we would not be able to manage a facility. Understand, when the contract was first done in 2009 or whenever it was, the understanding, I think, on all sides was that what they were bringing to the table was that international expertise in marketing that they were going to push this facility enough that it came off the books. But as part of it, they were not just marketing and managing. What has turned out is they have been more in, interested in managing than marketing, and the, the people of Jamaica have had to take up this slack of two million US per year. And I'm just saying, what we really want, if we are going to be marketing it, it is certainly not be above us for us to be managing it and having this thing done properly. So I, I want to say that, that going forward, certainly we will make our recommendations to Parliament, but you would have to have a very strong justification, a strong case to indicate why you would continue in this contract. There is no decision to continue in the contract, Chairman. As I said, um, the Board of Directors are reviewing performance and everything else, and a decision will be taken as to how we go forward beyond June 2018. So 
for that decision is um, it's within the purview of the June 2020. Well, I only say that I say that, and we are very mindful and conscious of what I just said a while ago. And I only say that is that oftentimes we talk around these things. You indicated that you had a six-month window of notice. And I would suspect that that window closes on the 1st of January. So unless you're going to be working over the Christmas, I suspect that you should start, the board needs to start doing its deliberations to make a decision so that it can act in a timely manner. And the board has been deliberating on the matter. All right. Dr. Spencer here. Dr. Spencer is a member of, of, of the board. He has, <laughs> he, has remained, he, has remained, he has remained silent throughout the entire conversation. <laughs> All right. Um, just one last just a snippet, the pension scheme. How far are we? Have, have you had people joining up? Have you found it? Is there something happening? Yes. Yeah, oh, we are very, we're very active. In fact, the pension scheme require a fund administrator, a fund manager, and an actuary before we yes. can go forward, as I you can understand. So we are in the procurement process for all three. In fact, we actually, actually just just did the bid opening yesterday, I think. No. Yesterday, so the bid opening for the manager manager and administrator we already opened and and, uh, and did evaluation for the actuary so we're well on our way the board of trustees is in place they are functioning and um we we have not set the effective date of the act for the simple reason that you need to have these preliminary things in place first so that on day one you need to have persons signing up so they have to have somebody to sign up with you have to have the, the fund manager in place and administrator in place. So we're doing those things. And the actuary really is to do the evaluation of both sets of proposals because we wouldn't have the skills no, in the house. So the actuary was, was um, recruited first, was pr procured first so you have, to do but that. The, the, but the short answer is that we're, we're still Very in the so. phase of building out the actual structure of the fund, yes. but the actual scheme has not yet been put in place. It's really still the public education. Right, so for the, effective date, to join up. the effective um, date has not yet been named because yeah. we have to do these plenary things first. Do you have any idea when you're hoping, or is, are that discussion Well, we're still expecting yet? to have it in place before the end of the fiscal year. We're working with that, with type, that time frame. Uh, okay. That, that, Minister, is said, our minister is still persons for the January January deadline, so we're trying our best to. to uh, well, you're to trying get to there. get it for the fiscal year. Right, right. but uh, what we're saying is the fiscal you have year. To get the fund but program. work is fully at pace. All right, okay, members, I think we have exhausted our deliberations with the Ministry of Tourism. But we have not exhausted them. No, not at all. Um, PS, let me, on behalf of the members, thank you and and the team. Um, you know, we are, we are. I think I think we are clear and are clearer than than when we came in. All right. So, members, as I indicated before we started, I will circulate to you about um, PS. We, we, as I said to Member Paul, well, there, if we are able to get. UDC and Port Authority just to come in and give us a, a briefing on Port Royal, but it's just that the notice is so short that it may be difficult. But if we are, we would ask whoever is your point person on it or you yourself to just come because what we are concerned about is that there is a coordinated e effect. Every, I think everybody is looking forward to it, but we, we want to be certain that it is moving in that direction. So, um, if so, we will notify you. But it would be only to deal with a specific matter, nothing more than that. All right? So, with that, thank you to the entire team. Sorry for impinging on your time for lunch. I'm sure that the permanent sector will take you all to lunch. <laughs> All right. Um, members, thank you. and.
I will be in touch this week. If if we are able to set the meeting, we'll meet either next week or the week after. If not, we will adjourn. We'll adjourn till the um, or till sometime early in January. So with that, members, thank you. Meeting now adjourned. Thank you very much, Chairman. is in